Call me in the door. There we go. Do I have an agenda here? Yes, I do. Minutes, March 13th and March 27th and April 2nd. Any comments? I read them over. No. I thought they were good. Well done. Very accurate. The same. Spelled yeah. correctly. Everything. Commas in the right place. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion? Yes. Second. Okay, we're done there. Comments from the public not listed on the agenda. No, two for two. Thanks. We have a public hearing, um, Eversource. This is a poll hearing uh, for locating telephone poles or utility poles, excuse me, uh, and wires on River Road. Uh, I don't see it road number here, so somewhere along the road, which I'm sure we're going to hear about. So what do we have, Brian? You, uh, you represent Eversource, I can tell by the jacket, I assume. Yes. You want to come up? Yes. Yeah. Up to the front seat there. Sure. Should I get the uh, assessor's maps out? Minus one. The floor is yours. All right, so uh, my name is Nick Kriegel, Eversource. Um, this petition was drafted up by one of our contractor writers. Uh, we're looking to install two fully owned mid-span poles for a regular platform uh, for the Waitley Renewables solar project. Um, looks like they have here 0.53 miles of Straits Road going one way, just to be south, and then 0.16 miles of Christian Lane to north. So, so that that would be the distance to the nearest intersection, intersecting road. The, but the poles themselves will be on River Road in between our pole, 23 over 59 and 23 over 58. So two mid-span poles in between those existing utility poles. So if I'm looking at this map, and the map that I see is north of Christian Land, or is it south? This map, are you looking at which map are you looking at? I'm looking at the Eversource City Waitley's. Yeah, so that is oriented. Uh, true north is, is straight up. So north is, so this is south of, of Christian Lane? Yes. By some unspecified amount because there's a little zigzag thing, is that right? Or is that? Yeah, I mean, it, the, the distance she has here on the diagram is 0 0.16 miles <laughs> to Christian Lane from the location of those poles. So. Point one six miles south of Christian. Okay. How can you tell that from this map? Point one six, point one six miles. That's only. Well, that's a sixty-eight feet. Is that Eighty-six feet. feet. Yeah. Um. For here, Matt. Why do you say this is in relation to the new solar farm? <coughs> so this is three regulators in line with the feed that feeds over to the Waitley Renewables. This is going to be... Yeah, that's kind of over here, Waitley Renewables. I was going to say, it's quite a distance from yeah. these poles. Yeah, these, these regulators, in a, in a sense, clean the voltage. It might be a little lower, a little high there, so they, they take up the difference of the line loss because this, this location must be far away from our substation. So by the time it gets to the, the solar site, the voltage is probably a little low, so these pick the voltage back up and make it a make it a correct voltage for the solar. Field. And we're talking about the site behind the grid collapse, right? We're talking about that site. Yeah. Wow, that's, that, that's my understanding, yeah. But yeah it's okay. slightly solar, that's yeah. the one. But so, near the intersection of Christian Lane and, and River Road, kind of behind the blue school, behind <coughs> the grid uh, Yeah. Yeah. So who's, who lives? But I, I think it's a property. Are there any homes by here? Yeah, but there's homes on. There are homes right here. On the left side, yeah. There's two owners, one up left in the corner. Yeah. Here, here. On the right side is only farmland. Yeah, so that's 171. Now this is, this, this is the land, this is a landowner. I'm not convinced they're houses. Right. Yeah. It's land. Is it open land? I haven't visited the site. I wasn't the one that wrote these, but the uh, the abutting landowners would have got a butter cards for these for these poles. But typically, if they were going to put a if they were going to put a regulator platform up, they're 
uh, I would guarantee you there's no houses there because that would, I mean, looking at the map here between, we're setting two mid span poles between two existing poles, so that's gonna eat up a lot of that, a lot of that uh, real estate. Here, and I don't know what these guys talk, here's my concern. And, and again, I apologize, but I've got a burn my saddle over the poles that went up on Christian Lane, which were four new poles right to the west of somebody's house. Okay. So someone no longer has a side yard. And I'm saying that as a huge solar support. Um, my only concern is how do the two poles right next to each other, sandwiched by two existing poles, how is that land on that side of the road mm -hmm. ever going, if somebody wanted to put houses there, why, it, why on earth would they? I guess I'd have to see, I mean, looking at this sketch that I have here, I think it's a little different than the sketch you have, but the, the, the existing poles that are there, probably 250 feet apart. So we're putting the pole roughly 125 to the center line and then 20 feet on both sides. Yeah. So I, that's, I, I mean, I guess. I get that, but that's, but I don't think solar is unattractive. I, I think it's fine. The poles, however. Yeah, the poles to, to get it there and to. So that's my concern. Is, it, is this just, I think it should be on the ground. I, I just do. And, and I'm worried that the, the, the utility poles it's not solar that's, that, that's hurting the agricultural landscape of the town. It's the telephone the utility poles that are hurting the agricultural landscape of the town. I, I, so I, I worry, why do they have to be that close together? So this type of a structure, I'm not sure if we have any in Whaley, but this type of a structure is 250 foot poles with a physical steel platform between the two. And what would hang on those are three regulator banks. It's too much weight to hang on an individual pole, so that's why we need two poles with a platform between them, and it's going to be three regulators on them. So it's not just the pole that's going to be unattractive; it's going to be the the regulators, the large well. birds that are hanging off the wire, euphemistically speaking. Correct. Explain again, as you did, uh, why you can't put this on the poles that are going to be installed just for the solar farm here. You're putting three or four poles or more on the entrance to the solar farm. Why can't this be there? This was, I guess this was determined by our engineers to be the best spot to put these to, to pick up the most load loss on that circuit. And that's why they located those there. They, they, and it could be too that closer to the site, the voltage is too high or too low for them to go there. It wouldn't make a difference. So they put those based on where they take their readings of where they need those regulators. So too, too, much, too much south, too much north, might not be enough to, to pick up the voltage for the solar for the solar site. Do you know which lot it's actually located on? The lot uh, owned by uh, <coughs> the dog or the one owned north of that by the Pacuna Trust? I get, it's looking at the measurement eight sixty three, and I've got the assessor's map up on yep. the screen. It's kind of hard for me to tell which lot it's on. I thought you might have to know. I do not know which lot it's on, though. I obviously don't know what I'm talking about in terms of the electricity generated. Is it possible technologically to put these underground? Never mind cost for a second. I mean, if, if cost wasn't a factor, I mean, anything can go underground. They have underground underground areas that have solar on them. It's, a, it's, it's definitely a cost. Cost is what drives underground. A lot of towns want to put streets underground, and then when you get, a, when you get the physical price of what it would actually cost to do that, it's, it's, it ends up being an astro astronomical number that's just not feasible. And especially in, a, in an area where <laughs> once you put it underground, while it might be a little more reliable for storm in, in the beginning time frame of you putting it in there, over years, it actually is less reliable because as cable ages and it, and it fails, now you have to replace it underground versus if we have a storm and it knocks a pole over, it's a couple hour outage versus if it's underground, it's a cable fault. We have to get an underground crew up here from another work center. It could, you could be talking multiple tens of hours to replace that cable. So in the long run, underground's 
less reliable than the overhead would be. But cost is cost is your is your factor of, of putting it under contract. There's a price for studies. Exactly. And preserving the town charge. All right. Are these locations marked out there today? They are. They're two stakes in the ground. So if we went out tomorrow, we could find them? Correct. Okay. And where would, where would be a similar installation like this? We want to see what it would look like. If you want to see what it looks like, the only one I know of in the area is, um, is that on 116. Do you guys know where the um, Bocce? Restaurant is on 116 in Sunderland. Go 10. Go 10. Go 10 right yeah. across the street, just south of that. There's three on the eastern side of the street. Okay. On 116, off of 116. On 116. On 116. Yeah. Okay. And there could be additional poles by the solar, too. Is that accurate? I don't know that they need any additional poles over there. I'd have to. Yeah, yeah, there is. I'd have to. I'd have to look at that project. I'm not familiar with that project. Right just like the other one, it's four poles down the road. Why isn't there a pole down the Because it's on private property. It's uh, not the towns right away. Okay. So we don't get up to yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to go look at these. And see yeah, I'd like to see at least the location of these yeah, and, I, and I, see in relation yeah. to houses, property mm -hmm. where it is. This is just a, a map of poles. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think there's any, any houses there, but. No, they, well, the, okay, the assessor's map says differently. It says, is that? There's a house. Oh, there's a house, okay. On this property, and it, you know, if it's up something like 900 feet, then it's something like one, two, it, I can't tell if it's on this property or this one, which is probably gonna be a housing lot. Someday. There's yeah. no house there now, but maybe. Those bowls, I don't know whether it will be an house. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I have to say, poll hearings are my favorite part of the selectmen's meeting, not because we never get an accurate map. Uh, whoever shows up doesn't know where the poles are going. Or does, it, it, it's just ridiculous how little information. I feel like you come in for a poll hearing and maybe it's, it's probably not your fault, I'm yelling at the wrong person. But you come in here and just expect us to rubber stamp whatever you put in front of us and then go put the poles wherever the hell you want. So that's my feeling. You can't even tell me what lot they're on. I don't know if you know where these are. I've seen the stakes in the field. I don't know what lots are on or what lots are on. I mean, typically, I, I don't know what your guys, your town process is, but typically a poll hearing, any poll hearing in most towns, it's, it gets field checked by usually a DPW superintendent. <coughs> Take a look at the state locations, and, and if he didn't have a problem, he, I okay. mean, he's, yes. he's looking at it from a different perspective. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So he did his job. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe uh, probably, are you feeling like you want to continue it? Yeah. Twenty fourth. Yeah. Oh. What's so? Whitley Renewables project hasn't broken ground yet, or is about to break ground. Yeah. So the urgency of having this in place isn't that urgent. Currently, because it, it would need to be in place when they when they go along, yeah. yeah. And so that could be. Two hundred and seven. Okay. Okay. Let's continue this. So we need a motion to continue uh, to date, time, and place certain. Okay, I move that we continue this both hearing for let's say six fifteen on uh, April our next meeting seventeenth. Our, no, our, our next full meeting is the 24th. This is the 24th. Yeah. For uh, April 24th, 615. Same okay. room, same time, same place, same station. Okay. Wonderful. Second. Done. Just may I ask, there, there's another location further down on River Road that you're going to put a pole across the road for a guide wire. Okay. It, because it was in a tree. Has that been done yet or not? I would have to field check yeah. that. I would have to see if it was done. I'm not. I'm not sure if it is done or not yet. I'm just curious because we approved the that change. I can. I can take a look. Down. I can take a look when I get back to the office tomorrow yeah. morning and see if it's done or not. Okay. I sense an op-ed being. I mean, no, I sense that. Hmm? I'm not writing an op-ed. I, I. I. I can't place the author, but I. I, I know him from somewhere. Okay. All the pen names. We'll see you next. Yeah. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Clock. Yes, sir. Welcome yeah. to. Come on up front so I don't have to like look around Paul to see. Okay. I'll go back. No, you stay up front. I want to keep my eye on you too. Okay.
Uh, okay. Hi, how are you two? Good. So I'll give a little background if you want. So as you know, the, the town hall has reopened and we had a request from um, the friends of the library that who were holding a book event at the town hall, uh, if we would reserve the parking for the event, for an event only parking. Um, and Chip contacted me, because uh, that's, that's sort of not how things have worked in the past. And I suggested that it would be good if we talk about it tonight to try to get some resolution how to move forward and to give Amy and I some direction as to what to do if this situation were to arise again. So, so here we are. Yeah, to begin with, it came up on a Thursday and it was a nice little sign across the street said post office and town hall parking after six o'clock. Nobody knew what that meant. It really didn't make any sense, even to Keith Barwell and a few other people from town. Because it didn't say parking only for the town hall after a certain time, but the post office isn't really open after six o'clock. So it really didn't make any sense. And that's why I called. Um, you did not get contacted in advance? I got contacted, I got the email the day before, but I don't live at the Whaley Inn, so I didn't see that computer till the following day when my bookkeeper okay. wasn't even there that day, yeah, okay. my mom, so I didn't even see it till oh. Friday. No, so that was already after I called. Um, but I did get it the day before. Um, yeah, it seems a little. So, but that, I mean, that, that's not the reason why I'm here. The reason I'm here is we've been going as a community parking across the street and at the Waitley Inn for voting, for a town meeting, for something that happened last week during the day when I wasn't open and the parking lot was full and they were using my parking lot. I have no problem with it. I think there's an issue if we start putting up signs saying parking only for this event, it's going to confuse my guests have been going for 38 years and it's going to keep confuse other people for other times. Do I put a sign up saying parking for the Waitley Inn only and start going back and forth? And I don't want that to happen at all. Um, I have an event, you guys have an event at the town hall on the 20th. Yeah. They sold 175 tickets for this event. Sold out in a week or so. He came over and talked to me, Paul, asked what he wanted to do. Hey, Paul. Hey, Chip, how are you? And uh, we decided on no sign. First come, first serve, park wherever you want. Maybe I was thinking down the road, Parking at the library, parking at the center school. Yeah. Also. Especially when we get those sidewalks in. Yeah. And that's, and that's another thing I want to talk about. I think, that, I think that's what would happen naturally anyway. <coughs> oh, I, I do too. 70 people. Well, let's say there are, there, let's say 90 cars. Right. I'm just making up a number. Oh, that's going to be at least that. Right. They're going to have to go where. Wherever they can. Wherever they can. And I, that's what I want to go with. I want, like, to do that. You should stay open late that night. Because <laughs> Seriously. I'm they open till 10 anyway, so. You gotta, go, gotta be out of there by 10, they're gonna be thirsty. So, and hungry and. Yep, that's no problem. But that's, that was my feeling. I was just a little irritated seeing that sign. If it made a little sense, I probably wouldn't have been as upset, because it made no sense to me and uh, the way it was rid. But that's about it. There's also no enforcement mechanism. Yeah. There is it. But I just don't want okay. customers coming into me every. Hey, am I going to get towed? What's going on? And and then, and then, you know, I promote that there's free parking in town when I advertise. When I advertise, I don't hardly advertise at all. But, um, that's about it. How many parking spaces do you have on your property? Like you can count that back. Can uh, in the back. back? Right. And what front and back? Fifty, sixty. Total? Total, 60. Yeah, because I, I got a dead septic system now that we're using. And the back parking lot, so that goes all the way in the back. And the front. I mean, I'll speak for myself. I, when I heard about it, I, my jaw dropped. I, I think 
you guys have created the best solution. But it is the same solution I would have. We're a community. We're a small, tightly knit, hopefully continuing to be tightly knit community. Wherever people have to park, people are going to park. We knew this was going to be an issue if, if the town hall was a success. I mean, it was, this isn't a, so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. And we benefit from the Waitley Inn doing well, and I think the Waitley Inn's going to benefit from the town hall doing well, because there's going to be more business. There's absolutely going to be more business. So I, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like, to, like somewhere, maybe I'm not remembering it correctly, but I thought when I heard about the, the, the wanting to put up the uh, event parking, that they said they had already contacted you. But that does not seem to have been the case. No, nobody contacted so that, that at all. That, so I, I, feel, the, the I, feel, I feel bad about that, that they, I, I felt like, my the information that's what was not the open been, communication part yeah. out there that's right. and I'm, I'm trying to think of like a situation in which it would really really be necessary and i'm trying to there's you know when the sidewalks are in then going to the back of the waitley and walking south hall is a safer prospect because it'll be a crosswalk um you know if it was my mother i'd probably drop her off and then drive somewhere else it might be that there, there could be a situation where we, we might want to say, you know, get a convention of over 80, or like over 80 year olds. <laughs> could, could we give them a priority? But every single time I thought about a situation where I might want to do that, I thought, well, how the heck would you do that? Like, how would you put signs up? How would you let people know? How would, and it's just not very practical. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, even, even if we kind of thought, yeah, there's a good case for making the town hall parking on event nights only for town hall event attenders. I, it's just untenable to enforce that. Yeah. And I'm not saying we do have a good case for that necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of impractical. So for, on top of what John said, I think um, <coughs> that's a, a, a the, the current solution is a reasonable solution. Uh, I'm thinking that this is a complicated situation because there's a lot of different functions and uh, people are going to be coming here that have never been here before, and they're going to need some direction. So I was going to ask the police, who just happened to walk in, if we could have the services of the police department for at least this first concert from about 5.30 to 7.30 while people are arriving to make sure that people aren't parking really dumb places. Uh, not not your lot or not the town lot, but somewhere else, more, a more creative space that might not be appreciated by certain individuals in town to avoid that situation. And also, it's a busy intersection, so it might be good for those two hours to have a little direction if necessary. I'm gonna have, so, so I see this as an evolutionary process. We're gonna learn as we go what works the best for everybody involved. And I think that's the way it should be, the only way it can be. Uh, and so I had a, I had my board members meet up at the town hall over the weekend, and we looked at the parking spaces, and that was our primary concern is, well, we gotta make sure that <clears throat> we have people out there telling people to go down to the library, go down, I think the Congregational Church is okay with us using their lot. It's a little far. <clears throat> and it's certainly far for handicap access, but if we can use your spaces as well, front, front or back, and we can park down the road towards the library, um, we should be able to get 80, 90 cars in there. I mean, we've had time. I do it on Valentine's here. Day every year, so, I mean, it's no problem. And every Memorial Day, we have that, those numbers of oh, cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, up and down the road during the parade. And, 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 and Paul, I would actually take issue with the fact with the, the church is a long distance. I mean, if you, if you, well, go, to, for me. so if you go to Symphony <laughs> Hall in Boston, you're going to walk a lot further than that to get to Symphony Hall. I mean, the Academy of Music in North Hampton. The Academy of Music. Right, exactly. It's just, so it's really not that. Yeah. It's a nice stroll. Right. Well, but, so, there, but there are people with limited mobility. I get that. I so get that. My, my main thought was, how, how do we give people with limited mobility priority? And I couldn't think of a reasonable way to do that. How many handicapped spots do you have there? Two. 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 Why can't you add more for like an event? Put up some. Handicap 
plaques, like three or four more across with like, like it. If it were thought that for a particular event, just that, you know, like a, a big event like that, just to Thank block you. off a three, three more up front. I don't think the front parking lot meets ADA requirements for slope. I think the ones right. in the back, possibly Fred, maybe right. one or two in the back could be posted like that, but the ones in the front or are not. Front. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. just for a day. But I would something. only see that for, for particular events. Like, I think the, the one that they had, the library had there, it was an octogenarian giving a reading from her book. There were going to be a lot of octogenarians there. So it, I could see where people for that event might have been worried um, about Mm -hmm. Wanting to have those spaces, and they were like telling, they were calling people and telling them to carpool. Um, uh, on that particular night, I couldn't go, but I dropped people off there on my way to this meeting. So um, I, I was trying to think of, is there a way to, that, that there's any kind of flexibility? And you know, there could be just a sign requesting, please give priority to people with limited mobility for this parking lot for this event. Mm -hmm. Or, but we'd have to make a really clear sign. I mean, I. I I think that on, on an occasional basis, I don't know that that would necessarily apply to your concert because there I don't know uh, how many you've done. Well, the spots are in the back. Is there two? Two. Two? Uh, yeah. Two so, handicap. Yeah, two. two and there's two, two handicap up front. Two extra. No, there's no handicap. There's none in the front. Yeah. It used to be, but not in all cats. There's one at the post office. Behind the, behind, behind, behind. behind the there's the nothing in front of that because of the slope. Yeah. You'd have, you'd have to put a person there because people don't pay right. attention to signs. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so maybe that's the solution that if you want to somehow prioritize some group for a reason because your event has a, a is of a certain nature, then maybe a budget for a police detail for the two hours beforehand to you know because I also I, I don't want to send someone who's got limited accessibility down to the furthest spot in the back of your place either. I mean, oh, it, I it's better for them to be up close to the entrance as well. So I, I sort of feel like um, the ex the exceptions are probably too small to try and legislate a, a solution here. But maybe there's something creative we can think of along the way. When it comes uh, someone with a really compelling argument that I really want to be able to reserve some of this space for people, especially with limited mobility. So, I, you know. I, I think we're getting back to putting a, a sign up for certain events and I, I think that's, that's it's not be very manageable and you got to remember the handicapped and elderly can park anywhere in that lot. We're not saying you park where it says handicapped signs, you've got 26 places you can park. Yep. You don't have just two, it's 26 you can park at. First come, first serve. Well, the, the other thing I, I will do is, if I remember, is ask people to carpool. So I'll just send out a, I know everybody who's coming, I have their email. So I can just email them and say, if you can possibly bring another couple in your car, that'll help us with parking. I, and I'd like to just say something in, in defense of, of, in defense of appreciation for what Chip has done for the town. For We were remodeling the town hall, and we, I think, asked you if our contractor could park there. And you said, yes, I don't remember who went, Brian, or the contractor. Yeah. And that was very much appreciated. There was, you know, quite a few oh, vehicles yeah. there during the daytime. Uh, I hope it didn't disrupt your I'm, business, I'm but, but you know, you you helped the town out in that situation. So I, I really appreciate that. The contractor did, and, and everybody was happy. They came to to do business at the town hall or post office during that year we were under construction. Jim, what were you going to say? Uh, I just I had two concerns. <clears throat> you guys may have already talked about it. Um, one, one being with, with your event and the, the uh, town meeting, um, because of the conditions of the, the sidewalk and almost zero lighting in that area, both of these events are gonna be ending at night. So I don't know if you've given consideration to lighting, um, you know, the condition of the sidewalks for, for people gonna be walking up and down the side, if they're parking down the road at the, at the library or yeah. at the church or something like that. It's, it's not a nice leisurely. Well, one thing that could be done would be for the town, since I don't know how this is going to work, or could buy a bunch of these stake and solar lights, charge them up during the day, and then put them out just for the event, and then pick them up after the event. That's a cheap, uh, those are cheap lights, but they work, 
and you know it would provide some illumination for people get at least going to the library as far as the library goes yeah because i think i think from a law enforcement perspective our concern is going to be getting people across the road in, in the darkness you know we're not going to be down by the church we've got street lights there yeah we're not going to be down by the church trying to you know right. make sure yeah. people are parking correctly we're going to be getting them across the road safely um, that's that's going to be our concern so that was just a couple of the concerns i had as far as the right i mean we're not going to further down there's no way we'll ever the neighbors certainly wouldn't tolerate new lights being put up permanent lights being put up they would justifiably say wait a second mm -hmm. um, but we can we can look into that but i have a question for you chip how do i put this um the foot traffic at the way we in oftentimes i will bring the average age down how do you deal with a multitude of people needing handicap accessibility or Never have an issue. So now, you never—that's sort of my point. You never have an issue. Handicap bathrooms, and six years ago, I have more people now. Right. So you never have an issue. So I don't foresee see us having and an I issue. And I even have the dirt parking lot in the back. Right. Yeah. They drop somebody's handicap. They'll drop them off in the front. Right. Exactly. And park out back. And I think um, that's going to happen with. Oh yeah. Yeah. And with town meeting and. <clears throat> sure. I, I think we should wait and see what happens and what the needs are, deficiencies, rather than. Doing all these measures that yeah, may well, not mean anything. I, I mean, we haven't had a big right. event there. Let's let's try it and see what happens, and then we can change. That's what I want. After that, yeah. If it is a problem, so direction to Brian and Amy would be do nothing. <laughs> I mean, it just it's. I think that's the first let's, time you give me that direction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the only the only other kind of kind of related to parking there we we've heard and. I think Brian knows is a daytime event where people come into the post office didn't have a place to park to access post office. Now I don't know if there was parking yeah, on the don't street have or too not. Many daytime events, so maybe a funeral that's really big or something yeah. like that. But I really don't do too many daytime events. Right. Well, I, I guess my my option or solution to that I don't know if anybody else thought of just put. The sign we have there in front of the post office, spots for parking, postal employee, postal visit, postal parking visit. only, postal parking only. You put in one or two spots during the daytime. That'd be fun. I, I mean, and, and at least you give them a place to park rather than way yeah. out on the road. Yeah. That's not your concern, it, it would be ours. Yeah. For yeah. Them. Right. But yeah. Because yeah. we never get more than a couple, three people in the post office yeah. at the same time. Same anyway. time, but yeah. They really missed that road that went down the side, I'll tell you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. All right. Are you? Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Jonathan, I just had one other question. Yes. If, if we're going to be there for town meeting and uh, for this event, I just want to make sure because I kind of came in late to make sure that I'm on the same page with with Chip. Is it? Are Are we allowing people? You know, somebody comes and we're there doing traffic or whatever, and they say, "Where can we park? Can we send them over?" Anywhere. Okay. Yeah, first come, first serve. First come, first serve. Okay. Spot. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't sending people over no. to his parking lot. Yeah. No, in we the back, to. in front, we'll whatever. Do. Jim, we'll give you a, one of the flags that they have at Fenway. <laughs> Directing me. <laughs> Did he give me a $10 parking Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do we, what do we agree on here? Just we we agree that it's going to be first come, first serve, and, and we're going to agree a lot on people's common courtesy to, yeah. to make this work. And no more signs. Yeah. No. Thank you. For the time being, and we reserve the right to do okay. some creative yeah. solution down the road. We'll see how okay. top meeting. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know if they can be in the robocall in, but we could encourage people to carpool to town meeting. Well, I was wondering, we have a vacant lot down on five and ten by Swamp Road. Maybe you could set that up as a carpool lot or something like that, where sure. people can uh, park there and then bring crowds. Yeah, something fine. that would people would have to be kind that's of closer to than the park and ride up in yeah, yeah. Park and ride. Right. sure make the traffic go past my house there you yeah. go yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can, yeah at least yeah. anyway so it, <laughs> actually it'd be less car. because they'd be parking there, there and you only one car would go by your house rather than the three that right. park there i'm gonna walk <laughs> we could build a wall but we could build a wall <laughs> all right let's end it there all right we're good thanks chip Thank you. Thanks a lot. Just one question. Yes. Is the issue of sidewalks coming up? 
Oh, I think you want you, you want to be. I want to see it. You want to be involved. I want to be involved. Yeah. Involved. Okay. yeah. Um, that's the discussions on the design of the sidewalks. We'll okay. probably start sometime. Sometime in May. Um, that's what we'll have. I'd yeah. like emails you, for that. Like to be it. Yeah, short sure. exactly. one. And if, if we're done with that one, it just dawned on me. Has anyone had a conversation with you about? And it's a long way from becoming a reality, but it's going to be reality uh, about the new memorial construction across from. Yeah, the that's. I have no problem with that so okay. far because it's going to be pretty congested for a while. Yeah, I had the town hall for a year. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. Anything to better the town. And Good. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, are we allowed to move six forty-five up? It's just an appointment. It's not here. How long is Lynn's? Oh, Lynn. Lynn is, Where's, oh, yeah, Lynn's at six thirty. I'm sorry, Lynn. I'm just. Uh, Ryan has all of the notes. We're here to sign notes. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got. And I brought my thing, my glidey flat pack. I had a quick panic yeah, attack. I thought I lost it. <laughs> my weightlifting. So this is the. That's a, that, that's, the, that's a clue. Reissuance of the note for the uh, <laughs> town hall <laughs> <laughs> rehabilitation project. The original note was, was a one year note for $400,000. Uh, this is another one year note. Um, and doing one year notes allows us to prepay principal each, yeah. each on renewal. So this one is for $265,000. Um, so is, is, is there a cost every year for the note, though? It is no. five. Costa. Um, to the, yeah. the fee for like producing the, the notes is 500 dollars okay. And then there's a, the interest related to the note. Oh, okay. The business interest um, is 2.3. Six 2.3? 2.3. It says it on underneath that sticky. <laughs> but it's, but but it, it saves a ton of money to do it this way. It's point three longer two. notes that you can't pay down. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it saves it a lot. A lot, it saves money. a lot of money. So it's a it's a it's a it's a net savings as opposed to a cost to the town. Okay. And people should understand that we're not adding to town costs. We're, we're decreasing the, town costs. Um, these one-year bands actually have lower interest rates than right. the state house notes that we actually do. Um, which we do multiple state house notes over the years. Those are higher interest mm -hmm. rates. The same. But the, the interest yeah, we're saving is here. more than the five hundred dollars that we have for the note. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to pay down any principal on the on the loan if we didn't do one. When it has to be one year notes, you note know, can't go for two years or three, so you don't pay that. But it's good, but then you, but don't, get you don't get to pay it down then. You yeah. wouldn't be able to pay it down until three years later. It matters how much they can pay this one down at the end of next year. 
if you keep paying them, what, 50000 or whatever? Um, well, they paid 143 this year. Oh, okay. Down. So um, now, or 45. Now it will be, uh, they'll be at 265. Right. It depends on, the, the reason why they're doing it this way is because uh, the CPA really doesn't, or CPC doesn't really know what kind of projects they're going to get. This time around, they had fewer projects, so they had more money that they could put towards this. Right. So doing the yearly makes sense in this case, because yeah. then they know each year how much they can right. put right. towards the project. But I think they, uh, they committed for 50000 a year for 10 years. For right. 10 years to start, yeah, so, so it's, it's going yeah. 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 to be substantially less. Less, less. yeah. yeah. So yeah. That's right. And I think the All to the good. For this year, I think, well, I think they were proposing 43000 and then possibly more of us, like they did this year. They right. paid the yeah. originally, and then they paid, they appropriated another 50000 at that uh, March 27th <coughs> special town meeting we had. So maybe that can happen again. Yeah. And, and part of it is they don't exactly know what percent match the state is going to give us. So, yeah. yeah. 43. is here to discuss staffing levels uh, and his employment agreement. Um, so, Brian, do you want to lead the charge on this or do you want to? Yep, so we talked um, two or three meetings ago about the police staffing and you had some some ideas and requests uh, for Jim in terms of um, information or ideas. He's, there's a letter in your packet um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that Jim had provided some additional information um, to the board in terms of the police staffing and then there's also the um, the request that we had from last time for the, um, the increase in salary which should probably happen in the in the context of a uh, of the employment agreement mm -hmm. or revisions to the employment agreement um, but really I mean I think what would be what would be useful in terms of the budget is we need to we need to put together a budget for FY20 um, and if any of if if the if the staffing levels are going to change or the um, or, or salary is going to change then um, it's useful to have those numbers in the budget that could be approved or it could also be approved later at a, a special town meeting or, or some other type um, that some other time so I, I guess that's I guess that's how I see it in terms of um, our options tonight. Um, but if we need some direction because we're really wrap, trying to wrap up the FY20 budget. Um, so decisions on, on these items and in direction as to 
what should be included in the FY20 budget would be helpful. And then whenever we decided here, we'd go to the Finance Committee, obviously. The finance, finance will meet next Tuesday. Um, that's their final meeting. And then in an ideal world, the select board would sign the warrant on the following night on that Wednesday. Okay. Which we are already scheduled to do. What salary numbers are we talking about here? I, you know what? I, 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 let me break in here for a second. Yep. Unless I, and you please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that are you talking about for the for the new officer? No, or for no, Jim? for Jim. For no, yeah, well, we've got I, two different. I know, I, and I, 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 right, I think right. that okay. the conversation about staffing is a plausible conversation or a necessary conversation here. For salary discussion, I think that's an executive session discussion. Am I not correct in stating that? It can be. I kind of think it should be, unless yeah. unless Jim wants it out and open up. But I, and that would be his call. But I, person, I think that 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 that, that anything contractual, we've always had that as a as a uh, executive session issue. Yeah, so I mean, are you okay? okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's okay with me. Yeah. So why don't we talk about staffing, and then if Jim wants to, oh, the problem is we don't have an executive session scheduled, and right. we would have to do that next week, or next early, week. like Monday. Monday's a holiday. What's that? Monday's a holiday. Monday's a holiday. So we would have to do it prior to finance on Tuesday. Need after this, no, it's not the agenda, no, no, okay. And and it being Wednesday, we don't have 48 hours before Friday. I don't, I'm not trying to be, no, I heard it. yeah, no, this way it's been done. Um, it can be Friday at seven o'clock. I can't. Can you guys do Tuesday executive session? That's the 16th. 16th. Um, yeah, I can. I go to the 6.30 assessor, so if you can. Yeah. Well, the finance committee meets at 5, so can we meet at 4? Or you can, uh, Joyce? I can. You cannot. Who's the police liaison these days? It's still me. It's, it's Joyce. It's, it's Joyce. Joyce really should be here. When can you? Could you be 5 o'clock? Well, I can leave Smith at 5 o'clock. Oh. What about a.m.? Like 8 a.m.? Um, Tuesday is the only day I have an 8 a.m. Monday is actually Monday morning is Holiday. much easier. Not for me. No, no, not for me either. We're not allowed to meet on a holiday. Is that accurate, Brian? Even under emergency duress? I don't know if this counts. I'd have to, I, I don't want to answer off the cuff, but I don't know. I don't know if there's a legal prohibition against that. I'd have to research that. Would I be able to join electronically? Are you geographically in this? There's Northampton geographically just. Well, well, we're all parts of the She's professionally disposed. Well, I mean. What about later on Tuesday? Like though? if we if we could meet, we could meet. At, oh, at, okay. No I could be at my computer at Smith at five o'clock on okay. Tuesday. Why don't we do this? Why don't Why don't we have Brian find out what the legal ramifications of meeting on? Patriots Day are, or and or, or just an executive session. Tuesday executive session at a time that works for our schedules, and we have 24 hours to figure that out. Uh, we have we don't have 24 hours to figure it out because Thursday, Friday, Tuesday at eight is 48 hours. So the, the executive session would have. And you don't count Monday, so. Meetings on meetings on Tuesday need to be posted tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow right? By five Forty-eight hours before. By five o'clock. So you have to start now. Forty-eight hours before, so if we met at noon, it would have to be noon tomorrow. Yeah, by noon tomorrow. Can you yeah. find out what the legal ramifications of Joyce being professionally disposed is? 
I mean, it could, well, I, I think we, that's perfectly fine. I think it's, I think it's not a problem. Okay, let's do that. I don't have to be in another country or another city. Right. Oh, um, technically, though, Northampton is another city. It is another city. Last I checked. I know. Yeah, I, I, I would think Joyce could participate remotely. Okay. Um, what time was for your schedule? I can be at my computer at five o'clock. Um, so. Can you beat your computer earlier than that? So Tuesday we're looking. So that we beat the finance committee? Yeah. Oh. Um, well, do you think 4.30 be early enough? Or? I'd rather do, have an, give it an hour before. Okay. Uh, yeah, look, I'll push some things around my schedule. We could do it at noon. I mean, if you can't, if, if you need. Oh, yeah, well, um, I mean, 11, 11 is open. Noon is more or less open. There's a meeting that I don't have to go to at noon. Uh, but, if you, but, I mean, if 4 o'clock is something that works, I, I've got, I think I can probably get, there's, I'm working with a student, she mostly needs a, for that last little bit, needs a, a lab buddy. Um, and so I can see if I can get another faculty member to kind of hang around the lab, help her out. But um, I, sh I should be close by, which I would be if I was in my office. Okay, so. let's, let's get set up for four o'clock on Tuesday. Okay. Jim, does that, does that work for you? Perfect. <clears throat> that you'll post that so it'll or Lynn will post that so I don't have to put it in my calendar because it's going to show up eventually. Okay, okay. Um, so we'll talk about staffing tonight. Um, okay, who wants to kick this off, Jimmy? <coughs> I mean, we read, I read your letter. I read the letter. Um, the, the one thing not in here, I think we have well, two things we asked for is one is the salaries of other communities similar size of white. I, I have that. I, it's not in there. It's, it's not, not in our chat. But, that, but that's, about, that's a salary thing. That's not the and that's something staffing that, thing. Well, okay. It's the same, it's not, it's the okay. same thing that uh, okay. it's not staffing. Okay. That you guys have for the, that the personnel committee uses for right. okay. assessments. But the information the that, well, I, I can yeah. do that offline through Brian or something. Yeah. But uh, that's salary related, not staffing related. Okay. Yeah. okay. And the other, the other thing was depending when the full time. The third full-time officer would be working on, on uh, if it was on a weekend, to, f to free up time for part-timers. How would that affect your budget? Um, I honestly, it's not going to help me to have somebody working weekends, a full-time officer working weekends. I, I understand the concept of trying to free up, you know part-time and that kind of thing, but I need somebody during the week. That's that's kind of what I'm looking for. So having somebody working, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that that's not going to help me. So, it, 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 so am I hearing this correctly, but this is not, this is all increased cost there's there's no reduction anywhere else in part-time needs officer needs correct and correct me if i'm wrong but it sounds like it virtually and again this is my back of the envelope mm -hmm. it virtually alleviates you of having shifts me personally having yes shifts? Be having scheduled shifts no. No, it does not. It does not, no. So you would still maintain the same number of scheduled shifts that you have now? Absolutely. Okay, I, I, I apologize for jumping to that conclusion because that's what it sounded like because you need Monday through Friday. Yeah, no, it would be it would be somebody working the same shifts that I'm working for the, the reasons that we talked about before at the last meeting. Um, the one big thing was the administrative stuff because during the week I go to meetings. Um, during the week, I, you know, I've got additional duties that I'm that I'm taking care of, uh, the administrative responsibilities, the training, all of those things. So um, that's not providing the best level of service to the community because we don't have somebody there um, answering calls or patrolling the streets while I'm 
halfway across the state at, at meetings or trainings or things of that nature. Did the call breakdown that you provided before give uh, did it, did, it, did it indicate when those calls, when the preponderance of those calls were taking place? So did it, did it say, well, historically, the majority of the 600 calls a month, I think you, you cited, um, the majority of those are between eight and four, Monday through Friday. It did not. It didn't see, yeah. and that would be helpful because it, that, that data would say, okay, there are, and I'm not saying, I'm just, I'm yeah. hypothetically, there are two calls on average per day between eight and four, or there are 200 calls per day between eight and four. Yeah, that, that gets into what, what we're considering calls for service as well. I, I get that, I, I totally get that, but. but my, my, my whole mission, my whole um, philosophy is proactive policing, is somebody being out there in the community doing stuff. Having somebody out there in the community, there would be more activity there'd be more call volume, if you want to call it that, more calls for service, because there would be more traffic enforcement happening, there would be more um, building checks, there would be more stuff happening. Um, as far as getting a 911 call, you know, I, I don't have the, the numbers for that. But, but then, you, if somebody was there, again, I'm making it 8 to 4, Monday to Friday, I just mm -hmm. If someone were there Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, Doing the patrol and doing, you know, responding to calls, etc. Yeah, what do we need you for? Yeah, the, then you don't have. I mean, I get you have meetings, etc. But you don't always have meetings. Yep. Yeah. So and, then, I, and I would be doing the same thing. So we'd have two people. If I didn't, if I didn't have meetings, I would be out there proactively patrolling as well and stopping cars and enforcing traffic. It's, sometimes it's difficult. I mean, we have almost 21 square miles to cover. We get people complaining all the time about speeders on their streets. Having two people to be able to do that. It would, it would be much more efficient for us to be able to cover both sections of the, of the town. We would get more traffic enforcement done. I'm not saying that I would be sitting in the station all the time because I got somebody out there working. There'd be places much more getting done. I don't think I really understand the scope of the administrative burden that you feel like you're carrying that's you know keeping you from doing other things so I, um, I, I not understanding what that burden consists of it's really hard for me to understand why an administrative assistant is not at all viable and the reason that well nobody else does it so we should do it yeah, that's not that, the only reason. That's, just, yeah, so, so I, I sort of feel like I, I don't understand that well enough to decide yeah. whether I really uh, agree with you on that. Um, I also don't understand why the full-time staff can't work more staggered days to accomplish better policing on the weekend. Maybe that we'll have better policing if we have full-time people who are you know, not, uh, you know, so they, if you've got a team of three and you can really say we're going to get better policing out of this team of three, I think being able to say and some of those part-time, those full-time officers are going to be working on the weekend, I think there's a case to be made there. But I, I just, it seems like uh, for full-time, you have like basically one full-time equivalents worth of part-time people, mm -hmm. right? And so you want to increase the staffing by an entire FTE, another full-time equivalent. So that's like an uh, increase of a third. But it, I don't feel like I'm hearing the case that we're really going to get better coverage out of that. And I, and I guess I don't understand how it wouldn't help you to have somebody who overlaps with you three days a week or two days a week, if they're also going to be more, um, uh, I don't know, I don't want to think that, that our part-time officers are not steady or not reliable, but if they, if we 
did staffing differently to include three full-time officers, we shouldn't need so many part-time shifts, right? We, if we're gonna add a whole other person, we should be able to either have more shifts or have the same number of shifts but not have so many part-time officers and then have less problems you know, scheduling part-time officers and training part-time officers. I mean, I think the savings and training is another uh, plus here. If you've got someone, full-time officer trained up, they're more likely to stay than a part-time officer who's probably not looking for a more full-time job. So I, I, I guess I don't really necessarily understand why that would actually be a good idea, or I don't really understand why some of the administrative burden can't be offloaded from you onto uh, a person who's not uh, uniform trained, you know, pistol toe policeman. You know, because you're giving, because your training is is quite varied, right? And and that's why your time is so valuable. Um, and I'm not saying that administrators aren't professionals. Administrators have their have their skills as well. And I guess I don't feel like I understand your administrative burden very well. Um, and that kind of makes me hesitate about moving forward with, at least at this time, a third full-time officer. That's my hesitation. And, and like I said, if I, I said it mainly in terms of what I don't understand. And maybe I just need more education. And maybe as the police liaison, I should get that. But I, I sort of feel like it's really, really hard for me to make a case for this to the finance committee at this point, for with what I know. So that's kind of what I, that was kind of my thoughts after reading it. Um, that I, I guess I don't feel like I understand enough to make a case. Yeah, I, I guess I I agree with you, Joyce, on the full time uh, person. If we hired a full another full time, that there should be reduced part timers. I mean, uh, and there is a savings to that because you're paying them for the, what, two or three shifts you have there every uh, every week, well, every day, Saturday and Sunday. So there is a cost savings if they're not there and you have the full-time person there. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm, not I'm not really comfortable with, with or don't understand uh, all the administrative stuff you go through, I guess. Uh, and as far as all the, the future activities you say that are coming to town that would require uh, special duty or, or your time during the day, I guess them things haven't happened yet. I mean, every, every oh, meeting. Have, yeah, 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 thank reviewing they security. Have respect, some some things you, have, but, but, but yeah. the businesses say that are proposing or looking at sites haven't opened yet. Mm -hmm. And some may never open. I, I guess to, to staff up today, just because you think there's three more businesses coming, uh, I, I, I don't think is a reason to staff up today. Let's see what happens within businesses uh, and, and what the need is at the time. Well, I, don't, I don't want you to take any one thing and, and make it that that's the reason why we're doing this because of the administrative burden or because of the businesses coming in or because of, it's not because of one specific thing, it's because of all of those things together that's adding adding more more responsibilities, more of a burden, which is, it, it's fine. I mean, that's, it's, it's my responsibility, it's, it's my job, but that's, that's my concern is that it's, it's taking away from being out on patrol, it's taking away from, you know, I respond to calls, but I don't always go out and proactively patrol because there's so many other things that are going on um, administratively. I mean, we've talked about administrative things in the past. I mean, I could, I could give you pages of lists of things that administratively get done. Um, I'm not so much concerned as far as the clerical stuff goes. Administratively, things that happen doing crime reporting, doing submission of crash reports, approving reports, those are all things that I'm gonna do anyways. I'm not gonna have an administrative assistant read through, a civilian administrative assistant read through all the reports, approve those, you know, redact those for, you know, for the public. Those, those are all things that I'm gonna do anyways. The, the clerical stuff that, that I talked about in, in the letter, those clerical things are, 
you know, during budget time, you know, maybe somebody wouldn't be able to help out doing, you know, clerical work, help me filing or, you know, doing payroll or things like that. But those are, those are things that happen once every, every couple of weeks for, for a couple of hours. I mean, I've been doing that for 16 years anyways. Those aren't the, the huge burden. And, and I don't want to call it a, a burden, but that's, that's the, kind of the way I'm looking at it. It's, it's me having more administrative responsibilities, taking time off of, off of the road. Somebody should be on the road. That's, my job is to make sure that the community is, is covered and that they're being provided with the best level of service. And that's the way, that's the way I feel it, it's going to happen, that, that somebody's there all the time. My, my goal, my mission is to have two days a week covered, seven days a week. And that's that's what that's what it is. And there's so there's times like last. You mean two shifts? Two shifts. Yes, I'm sorry. Two shifts a, a day, seven days a week. Like last week, for example, I had to drive out to Maynard to pick up our breathalyzer machine. It's an hour and a half each way. So that's three hours that nobody's in town just because I had to drive out there to pick up a, our machine. Let me ask because you. Because I'm the I'm the coordinator for that. When you have trips to Maynard, when you have trainings, when you have court appearances, what have you. How far in advance do you, do you know those are going to happen, typically? I mean, I understand there are... Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on what it is. I mean, training, <laughs> trainings are scheduled. Yeah, right. I know, I know so that. if you have trainings, I mean, so we'll just use trainings as an example, and the trainings are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. And those are your shifts, because your shifts are Monday through Thursday for 10 hours? Yes. Yes, okay. So you know... And I assume you will try to schedule a part-time officer to do patrols and, and calls and what have you when you know you're going to be in training. I don't have money in the budget for that. The, the money in the budget is just to cover the, the shifts that the part-timers cover. Okay, so when you, you know you're going to be out of town. There's, whatever, there's no money in the budget you don't for have that. Some, okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and, what, and those shifts that part timers do are that's just Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes. And right now there's two full time officers, and both full time officers are working Monday through Thursday, and both are working the same ten hour shift. No, nope. I work ten hour shifts, and the other officer works eight hour shifts. Okay, but he works yeah. five days a week. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, and you guys overlap some of those hours? Uh, yes, in the afternoon. Usually for for an hour or two, depending on. The and, and so it would work to have if you had a third officer that they might be overlapping with you some days, overlapping with Don some days, maybe even on the weekend, maybe not overlapping with either of you, but be able to. It just seems very reasonable to to not do a 30% increase, that's a big ask, a 30% increase in the personnel, uh, because those can be expensive, especially when health insurance gets added in. Um, rather than going for something where if you reduce the part-time officers and add a full-time officer, it's a much smaller blow to the budget. And it, it, it seems like a smaller step might be a better strategy, for lack of a better word. That, I mean, that's kind of, just kind of looking at it. I, I don't know anybody, any other department that's asked for a 30% increase in the number of personnel, which would be 33.3. Um, and that, so that just, that seems like. Yeah. I mean, th th there's been discussion in the past about a 20 hour a week part-time officer, 24 hour a week part-time officer. I mean, you're still looking at, you're still looking at benefits, but, um, it's harder to find part-time officers huh. to work. Right, well, I, I'm not arguing that. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying if you ask for fewer part-time officers and somehow make it, if you're gonna get a third person and have them work only the same exact hours that you already have two people working, it, that, I think you're gonna, it's gonna be hard to argue for that. Well, it, that we're not getting any extra coverage really out of that um, and we're still having to pay all these part-time officers for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that it just kind of seems like, well, couldn't we do a better job distributing three full-time officers so that we need fewer part-time officers? That, I mean, and, and I think people would respond to that as a, as a very reasonable thing, that there's advantages to having three full-time officers 
uh, and fewer part-time as opposed to two full-time and many part-time, then there I think you've got a case, a better case to make. It has some of the advantages you're arguing now plus others, and that might be something to think about, I guess. Uh, I still would like to see a comparison to other yeah. similar sized towns, not salary levels, but the number of full-time and, and part-time police officers, other towns, that, same size as Waitley has. I don't care what Deerfield has or Northfield yeah. or, Maybe or the, Greenfield. That that is a relevant to North, Northfield is a similar size. Town. It's not relevant yeah. to us yeah. here, but for the, uh, for the call volume. I mean, here, I, I get when you when you get into the comparison, looking at um, towns that are similar to Waitley. I mean, I compare there's 16 full-time departments in Franklin County. Um, right, but a lot of those we don't compare yeah. ourselves to for other reasons. Yeah, exactly. So, but we have the salary information for those other seven towns we do compare ourselves to. Mm -hmm. Could we have information about how many full-time and how many part-time, how many shifts are covering, what's their call volume like? Is there any yeah. easy and way I, to get I do have that? that information. I do have information for surrounding towns. Hatfield has three officers. Well, similar, you're gonna, similar. We need, we, we, uh, you can't just like yell it out to me, and I'm not going to remember it. Yeah. Okay, so it, it, we, yeah. we kind of need that information in a little bit more organized fashion and not just like when you say three full time officers and then how many part time in addition to that. And, and, and I guess a little bit, yeah. see, it's hard for us to make comparisons when we only have part mm -hmm. of the data. That's, that's, that's your, your analysis and your support for it, that's fine. But I guess the board here needs. I think to see that information and decide whether we agree with it, with what you're proposing. Yeah. We have nothing to look at other than what you're telling us. Yeah, so I, I spend more administrative time trying to figure out every analytical angle that you guys want to put on it. And, you know, how many part-time officers you have, how many shifts do you cover, what are your shifts, coming up with spreadsheets. I mean, it's, it's, it's a yeah, you must extremely have time already on a spreadsheet. I, I have basic information, like, you know the the salary the salary information. I've called around the chiefs. You know how many how many full time officers well, do you yeah, have. What but is, I haven't there? seen all of that. I, I understand that. Okay. You're you're looking for way more information than what I what I already have, which is going to take but much more time. You haven't shared the information you have with I us. I, I, have that, I, I have that information. I just I didn't include oh, it okay. in there. That's what. That's what okay. So we don't have that. Information. Yeah. I I, I think it was I'm supposed I'm, to be included in the email. I forgot to attach it. My apologies. I, I think I'm hearing that we're not of the mind to, to, to support a third person right now. I am hearing perhaps that we would consider some part-time element if we saw the data to justify helping out during the week when you're not available, again, when you're doing X, Y, or Z, so that we do have coverage. Um, I think I'm right that at least we'd, we'd entertain that. I'm not saying we would approve it, but it would be an interesting conversation. Right. But I, unless you, unless I'm wrong, I, I don't think I'm hearing support for a third full-time officer as part of the budget this year. Right, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I, I feel like it, it's kind of being rushed in here. We want yes. more information. Um, I, I, I want to say no for now, but I'm open to considering it with kind of more information and more, you know, time to, you know, think about what the ramifications are. Does that, yeah. I mean, could, could I write down sort of what, what information? specific information you guys would like? Sure. Just to, so we can give Jim some um, kind of direction. Well, we have some comparison towns already that the personnel committee uses. Yep. So at the very least, um, how many full-time and part-time officers do those towns employ? Yeah. Um, what kind of administrative assistance does the town give to the police department, if any? Um, uh, and call, uh, call volume. And hours of call volume. High, I, high, high call flow. Yeah, low yeah, call. like, like what? Yeah, like when? When are the? the well, I suppose that for for Waitley, that's more important for us to have that for Waitley. 
but I think a general call volume for adjacent towns. I don't care what the calls are as much. Right, but, right. but in Whitby, I, I, I think knowing when the call, when the preponderance yeah. of activity is going on, you know, hours of the day, I think it's important for Whitby. Yeah. Okay. Um, Could I make copies of this and just give it to you guys now? Because those are the first three things that you've listed are on the sheet that I have already yeah. for the comparison to homes that you have. And that would probably be the only thing it doesn't have is part time officers. It's just a full time officer, but it doesn't have part time on it. Well, yeah, I I both can, of I those can, are important. I can have that information, but I have some of that at this point. If you want me to hold on to it and yeah, give it to you all If you once. pull it all together, that would okay. be good. Um, do you think of anything to add to I, that? I'm, I'm confused a little. Jonathan, and, and you made a comment, and I agree that we're not, we don't see, I guess, the support now for the third time officer. And now Joyce is saying, asking for more information. Are we still going to consider this? Is this an open case still, or are we done discussing it? I, I, my understanding was that, that we're not going to consider it for the upcoming fiscal year as part of what we go to town meeting with. Yeah, okay. I think Joyce is saying it's a plausible conversation to be had down the road, but not for FY20 budget that we proposed the town meeting. Okay, yeah. that, that explains what we're agreeing to do now, right? right? And whenever this comes available, this information, we can look at it, but not for this budget. Yeah, season. it's a, right. like okay. time for that. Right. Talk, okay. Talking sure. about the, the incremental, I mean, would it be plausible to look at um, the possibility of using part-time officers for days that I know that I'm going to be training and doing so. I mean, that would be an increase in the number of shifts, the number of part-time shifts, but, um, you know, if we can cover some of that, you know, adding, I mean, that would add uh, money to that. I, I think that's, I think that's information that's relevant. I mean, again, I don't know how many, we'll use four shifts a week, okay? And, and, and part-time officers use a four-hour shift, correct? Eight. It's an eight-hour shift, so there's no four-hour shift. That we can say eight-hour shifts. Yeah, on the duty, on duty, when we get on. So it does, is, it, is it possible to have a four-hour shift, or is it just? I mean, anything's possible, but you have a four-hour shift, and you, you've got the majority of the day that's not covered, and, and like I said before. No, I mean, I someone's covering you for, to go to, a, to Maynard for three well, hours. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what that's what I'm talking about. So you could so rather than yeah. having an eight hour person, you could say a four hour shift. Yeah, that, that's why I'm saying if, if it was a twenty hour a week person, you know, if they're there every day for four hours. Yeah. Or but I think it's but I see Jimmy, I think it really needs to be flexible uh, to the extent possible. I, and I understand that maybe I, I get that. That's that's the challenge is to hire yeah, somebody that can like like why why couldn't a part time officer be hired when you need to go to Maynard to be why can't they go to Maynard? That, right? I mean, then I, I think your time would be much more valuably spent in town rather than being a, a taxi driver for a breathalyzer that any other uniformed officer ought to be able to pick up. Or, so, but or a non-uniformed officer for that matter. Yeah. yeah. But that's not necessarily the case because I have to break down the machine, I have to set the machine back up, I have to do tests, and I'm the administrator of the machines. So it's not just okay. dropping it off, picking it up. It's there's much more. So it's more than three hours. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's, it's half the day. Because you break right. and that was just to pick it up. I mean, we have to bring it for annual calibrations. I, I sometimes I'll drop it off and pick it up a, a couple of days later because it takes them three hours to calibrate it. So I may leave at six o'clock in the morning, get there for seven thirty, eight o'clock, wait for three hours for them to calibrate it, and then come back. So sometimes I'm not back till twelve one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Um, so. But but you, and, and a, and a part time person could not do that. They, I mean, they could do the transportation of it. I could set it up when it comes back. They could break it down when beforehand. I mean, it's we've, right. we've had um, other officers deliver it in the past. It's just again to, for me to, to schedule somebody to come in, pay them for three hours to drive there, four hours, uh -huh. pay them for four hours to drive there back and forth. Schedule all that is is just easier but, for me to. But correct me if I'm wrong. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but. To go get a breathalyzer in Maynard, and again, that, this is just a, a one right. example. Maybe yeah. it's not a good example of, of, yeah, of the demands. It's but, one of the million. Use that example. One of the million things, yeah. 
you could hire Fred to invent breathalyzer. You don't have to hire a, 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 an officer making 50 bucks an hour to do that. You could hire a which they were making for the or whatever, whatever it is. I don't know what they're making. It's but, not the detail rates. Yeah. Right, but, but you get my point. I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't have to be a uniformed officer to go get a breathalyzer. Mm -hmm. It could be anybody. Yeah, that's just an example of things right. that, that I'm out of town for, right. so somebody could be covering the shift. Right. Yeah, so, yeah so, they, I could work the shift and somebody could go to Maynard. Right. They're, because, they're still going to be paying for four hours, whether I go or they right. go. Because you know, somebody. because you, you have a, 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 a a sense, a scheduled sense of when you're not going to be available to mm -hmm. do police duties inside Waitley. Yeah. That person could be scheduled for those time slots as a start just to see, you know, I, I yeah. think that's a viable thing. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm kind of talking about. Right? But, I mean, but, I but not full time, I'm saying part time. Yeah, yeah, that was my, my alternate suggestion was to, is there some increase that we could put into the into the budget to cover. I mean, at this point, I mean, looking at the administrative, and it's not just driving the Maynard, it's, you know, the classes that I do each year. The executive right. training, my mandatory training, that's 56 hours. I take one-day classes, two-day classes. We go to meetings a couple of times a month. There's, there's things that are going on. So you, well, you could work out to be 20 hours a week, easily, for administrative Well, I, I, I'm not sure that, 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 that's a big step. For just, I mean, can, can we somehow make this into smaller steps? Would certainly be helpful. Yeah. Um, a, especially this late into the budget process. Yeah. It's that it's really hard to make big oh, I agree. Uh, adjustments. I think making the adjustment for the times that I know if that are going to be out. For if the, there were like a, <clears throat> I'm going to throw out a number: a sh one shift every other week, or if you were to do it weekly, four hours a week. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, how much extra that would cost, but Brian's got his calculator. If I talk slowly enough, he'll figure it out by the time I get to the end. But if you knew you had roughly one shift every other week, could you, would that give you some, at least some coverage Mm -hmm. um, and that, because I'm sure not everything is going to be schedulable in advance. Correct. So, yeah. so that's. But if if but we can cover do, some of the schedule stuff. So. Yeah. If they if if that would get some relief for the and I know the the I appreciate the extra the, the paragraph about the extra burdens of having to review security plans and there get more meetings than you probably had when you set up your original schedule for how many shifts you're going to work and being out on the street and so on. So it, I, I really appreciate that. But it, uh, it'd be a lot easier to make a case for having some either replacement for you on the road or a, someone who can do some of these tasks. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is going to be transportation because I believe we have like two cruisers that are and, and the front line car we be, yeah we better not go over those two <laughs> we, yeah. we, we, they would be we, taking the, the spare the third car the detail car that we have right right so so it, it, that's the other because if you had really two people working at the same time you sort of need two cars and then the third one is going to be in the shop or the second one might even be in the shop so that that's in addition Right, right. So if the people are all concentrated at the same time, then transportation becomes a problem. But if we can spread people out over the whole course of the week, that makes that less urgent sort of thing. Yeah. And I see Brian has stopped much of it. What's this? I did. Some numbers. What? I, how many? One. How many hours a week? Four. So that's four hours a week. Oh, I thought you were done with I wanted to make sure. So that's. Okay. I would have done it, but I left my phone in the car. So that's, <laughs> let's say, $76 a week. Four hours Four times hours. the rate is 18 a we'll, we'll be 18 a So that's $76 per week. Okay. So. Thirty-five, thirty-six hundred dollars a year. 
Be a full day every, every other week, or yeah. on average, yeah. something that gets you. There's a few weeks that go by that you know, nothing's going on, but you can save up some of those for budget time where you can work on a budget on somebody yeah. and for four hours. It would be helpful. Yeah, Amy's got lots of time to burn during budget season. So. How, does that, how does that relate to your proposed budget so far? I, I mean, are you. It would add. You're proposing yeah, no, from, from last year to this year an increase already? Or no. is, could this be absorbed? You weren't touching part time and stuff. So, no, part timers at all. The only increase is the cost of living. Right. Okay. Okay. That's what I that didn't increase any shifts. So it was, yeah. It was, it was actually less than the level funded for this year because we took some money off for a couple of different things. We had two new cruisers, so we didn't have that. Spend as much for repairs and things like that. So we're that's different. Yeah. yeah, a little bit less than level funded. So, yeah. Yeah. so do I hear? Do I hear a motion to increase the part-time officer budget by four hours a week for fiscal twenty? Is that what you're? Or to, re to recommend that to the finance committee? Yeah. A part-time officer to to what work the same time as no, as that, that would be a what? replacement time. It would be replacement time. So so when when Jim knows he's going to be in court or he knows he's going to be in training, he can plan so that we have coverage here in Wakeley when he's not going to be here. So, so you're essentially increasing the part-time officers line item by four thousand dollars. It's pretty from, from what? What's the start? Uh, Forty-five, eight fifty-seven. So we go to forty-nine, eight fifty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. And that is to ensure police coverage. Time. And and that's during the that that's during business hours. Yes. I mean that's so that's I guess I'm I'm forecasting town meeting. That's a, that's an explanation that people will say. Oh, I, I get that. Okay, but but there's there's an overlap to, with the, the the two full time office two full time police we have. There's an overlap during the day. Right now, from what does the overlap occur? Yeah, from yeah. Two to four o'clock. One three, to four. Three to five. From three to five. And there's not usually administrative stuff happening between three and five. It's meetings, trainings are usually in the morning, all day. It's it's not. And I mean these aren't these aren't all administrative um, duties that, that I take on. We have another full time officer, so I, I delegate a number of things to him as well. So he has he has responsibilities as well. And there's times where those those overlaps are discussing administrative things or of discussing things that have been going on it's, it's kind of like a roll call um, type of thing as well so it's it's not just i can't I just, really take advantage of those overlap times for administrative stuff my my reservation on this is i mean if there's nobody there it's not like there's no police coverage in town i mean there's state police is available 24 7 aren't they if something should happen while Jim is going to get equipment or whatever. I think I outlined that. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, but, but, but that would yeah. not, but, but the state police aren't doing community policing. They're not, they're not no, stopping but, it. But if there was an incident there or something where they needed police coverage, uh, the increase just in case he has to go do some, be out of the office for extended period of time to get equipment or whatever, or court, whatever. I don't know. We need, I'm not convinced we need extra staffing or part time even for that time. Well, Jim, let me ask you a question. Uh, what is? And I'm, I'm hoping you have this data. Never mind the the the, the, the traffic stops and that that stuff. The call comes in. What's your average response time? Uh, I I don't have the exact figures, 
but you I would must say, have it available because yeah, you know yeah, when it's available, and you log when you arrive. But it's it's less than less than ten minutes. Probably I would I would say at this point probably six seven minutes. Okay, and then so you also well I'm hoping you have it, but I could understand why you wouldn't have it. What's the average response time when it has to be dispatched to the Northampton barracks? That that is such a wide. There's too many variables in that. Like, a perfect example today, there was a state trooper that was, I heard him on the scanner, he was sitting at the um, DeMaio's parking lot. He was sitting there. They dispatched him to a call on 202 in South Hadley. So, I mean, it's, it's gonna take him 20, 25 minutes to get there. He could be in Holyoke, he could be in South Hadley, he could be in West Hampton. There's three, three road troopers covering from Holyoke to Whaley, including Sunderland and Leverett. That's the area that they cover, almost 60 towns yeah. that they're right. covering. It could take them a half hour right. to get there. I'm I'm putting putting my, it might be more than 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I'm, putting my, but I'm putting my ambulance hat on for a second. Mm -hmm. They know how long it takes for them to respond to a call in one of the three towns. They also know exactly how long, if they need an intercept here in, in one of the three towns, from yeah. three, whatever, and it doesn't happen correct, but they know exactly how long on average, and again, you're right, sometimes it's gonna be 30, sometimes it's gonna be 10, some, but that's why they know what the average response times is for, pe for ambulances outside of the three towns to come into the three towns. So my question is, that's information that I think would help Fred say, oh, okay, response times are important for, for, for emergency response. And if Waitley is doing seven, I'm just, again, I'm, if Waitley's doing seven and the state police on average take 14, oh, okay, that, that's pretty cool data. Yeah. And I'm sure it's a push of the button data. It, it has to be. Not for them, it's not. No. <laughs> Why not? It's absolutely not. Their, their record management system. They Why can, can ambulances do it and police can't? That doesn't make we, any we sense. We can do it. I can do it with my system, but they, they run a completely different record management system. But they could do it. They must know your There was a time when we couldn't get that for the EMS either. Yeah. I, I know, but, but this is state police. I'm sure. I, I would, don't want if I called them tomorrow, they could give me response times. And if they can't, if, if, if that's a newspaper story. <laughs> If you can get it, I'd be happy to see it. But you don't have you you have no idea what it is. I mean, to to me, the argument is more of. I mean, well, if it was really just, do you want someone to show up when you call, regardless of the response time, then we don't need a Waitley Police Department. We need a Waitley Police Department to the extent that we want to support community policing, to the extent that we want to have. <coughs> Uh, a, a, you know, a local steady group to be able to do things like know where all the, you know, well, to know where the trouble spots are in town, to be able to respond to those, to be able to look at security plans, to be able to, you know, do the kind, I mean, I count those things as part of community policing. So, I mean, they, I, don't, I don't think that, uh, I'm not saying response times are irrelevant, um, but what I am saying is, if the value is in the community policing, then that's how you make the argument that this is worthwhile. And if not having Jim out on shifts is meaning we do less community policing with our police department, then this is a way to either let Jim be able to be out there and put some of these tasks like breathalyzer transport <laughs> on the shoulders of a part-time person who's competent to do that job um, and or maybe uh, have at least someone out there doing community policing for the things that Jim has to do as police chief like trainings but uh, I think the, the argument has to be in terms of what's I mean what's the value of having the Waitley Police Department I sort of put it starkly there right if you just want someone to show up at your house when there's an emergency well we don't need necessarily that to be a local person unless the response time is the critical thing. But I think that's not the reason why we have a Waitley Police Department. See, and I would argue it's both. Oh, I, no, I, I, I think I'm, sure, I'm sure there's, there's right. some of both, right. but, but you can get one without a local department. Well, it's slower yeah. response. You know it's gonna be slower. And I was just responding to the response because of, of, of Fred's yeah. concern. That's, that's why I brought that up. 
but I do think it's community policing, and I think it's response time because I think response time can be life or death. It's, it's, you know, a domestic violence thing. You want someone there quickly. You don't want to wait for someone to come from Holyoke or whatever. And I'm not saying that's the norm, but response time is a, a valid element to the decision making. But I, I'd like to see average response times. I mean, you're given outliers of somebody going from, from here to Southampton or even going to Maynard to pick up equipment. That's an outlier. The ambulance, it takes them 20 minutes to get to West Whateley. That's not average time. I, I guess I like to see averages, like, like you're saying. What's the average response time? Yeah, you're going to have outliers. Some are a minute and some are 20 minutes. What's the average? What do you, or what do you shoot for? What is your goal, to be within five minutes of a call? I hear outliers a lot that are once in a blue moon that happen. And I'm not sure we need to staff up for, for that incident that happens every very infrequently. And I'm not looking at staffing up for that incident that may well, happen. You would there. give us examples I'm looking, of all I'm these. I'm looking to have somebody there all the time. Okay, but that's, many, that's, the, that's my goal, is that because that's what the people of Whaley deserve. Well, many of your examples are these, to me, are, are outliers that are rare instances, or, or maybe they occur every well, year. We could spend we could spend all night uh, going over examples. I, I know, but uh, right. I'm just trying to throw some things out so you guys get a, a better understanding of it. <clears throat> no, I, I, I'm looking at that paragraph, the one about you know, the, I do want him to review all the security plans. For any marijuana facilities that are going to go in. And that will take yeah. his time whether the marijuana facility actually ends up happening or not because it's part of their planning. And I want him to be at the meeting. I mean, it, we, we, we are asking him to do a lot of these things. I want him to be at the castaways every time there's a call there. And I want him to be, I mean, we, we have asked him to do all these things. Okay, but at the right? same time, we, we're asking Brian to do many of these same things. Is Brian getting more help to do that? Well, other than since we had well, a meeting this well, yes, but, me. I, but I, I, I mean, are we giving Brian more time to review? He's reviewing these plans. And doing he's not, this. I don't know, are you doing I, security plans for these places? No, no but he's no, doing they, uh, applications, uh, host agreements, and, and other things that, that uh, I, I, it was I, just I, an I, example of something I, that well, wasn't done before. But let's, let's, wrap it. Right. Let, let's assume, and, and I know I'm right, you're always I'm right. shocked. <laughs> are you sure? Let's assume that people's job descriptions are not set in stone. That we understand that what your job description is in year in 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 1965 is going to be different than your job description based upon reality of the 1966. So, and I'm using old yep. years because I don't want to. I'm making a hypothetical. So, I, I don't. I don't think it's fair to say, well, all these things are, are, are new because some things may, that he was doing a year ago may not be necessary. He may not be doing those things. I don't know, but Brian's not doing certain things that he was doing two years ago, but he's changed it to, 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 to stuff that's required for the town administrator's job in 2019. Just like the, the police chief's job in 2019 is a different job by definition than it was in 2017 by some degree. Mm -hmm. right. So I, I, I guess I, I want to sort of, we, we can go around in circles all night if we want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask if there is a, and we're going to have to take a vote, if there is any motion to recommend a different staffing budget to the finance committee than the one that we currently have in the budget. Based upon the 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 the, the comments yeah. and stuff that, that Jim has. For fiscal year twenty. For for, for fiscal year twenty. Well why don't I make the motion to request the modest increase in the part-time officer budget specifically so that Jim has some flexibility for coverage when he's got a particularly high administrative load. 
or he knows it's going to be somewhere or it's in transit. Yeah, some because some of those are foreseeable. Not all of them will be foreseeable, but some of them will be foreseeable to help with actual community policing, making sure that that happens uh, under times when there's a big administrative burden. Because I guess bottom line is what I'm hearing from our police chief is I'm feeling a bigger administrative burden and uh, I'm not having the coverage on in the community that I want. And he wants 40 hours a week. I'm saying as a baby step, let's do four hours. And maybe this can be an ongoing discussion about what a better solution might be. So that's the, the proposal for uh, be able to flexibly schedule four hours per week on average. Above and beyond what's already there. Above and beyond what's already there. And at his discretion, right? So that's, that's a proposal, an increase of something just shy of $4,000. I will second that. So I guess we need, do you have, anybody want to say anything else? Brian, do you want to add anything? No. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion to increase part-time staffing hours by four hours a week for fiscal 20? Aye. Say aye. 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 No, I oppose. I think he should have enough. He has enough flexibility with an existing budget to cover that. The four hours a week to me is uh, something he should be able to manage. Okay. Uh, the the vote carries two to one. And we will see you on Tuesday at four p.m. here. And Joyce will be on the screen. I'll be here. Okay. So do you want me to send this request to the finance committee? Yes. For its Tuesday meeting. Right. And we haven't voted necessarily to recommend or not recommend the article. We're just saying we're, we are suggesting the finance committee do this. And then when, because it's, then not, it's not an article yet, right? Brian, how does that work? On Tuesday. Well, it'll, it'll be, the finance committee will be adopting a budget on Tuesday. So they'll either adopt or not adopt. They'll adopt or not adopt the and, change. But yeah. then we could put it on as an article if we chose, even if the finance committee did not. Right? So at this point, we're recommend. At, at this point, the motion is to recommend that the finance that they committee. They put it on. Right. Yeah. They and we'll cover. We'll, we'll cross the other bridge when we come to it if we have to. There we go. Yeah. Right. I, I mean. The Finance Committee's budget is the one that's by our local bylaws is supposed to go on the warrant. Right. As the operating budget to be voted upon, the select board could choose not to recommend the Finance Committee budget, the budget proposed by the Finance Committee. Uh -huh. And in theory, you, I, I want to look at this a little bit, but in right. theory, I, I, I suppose you could have a separate article to raise and appropriate an additional amount of money that, that, right. that will that would cover that. That really puts a spotlight on it. It certainly does, yeah. Okay. Um, All right, so for now, we, the, it's, it's past yeah. two to one that we are recommending yeah. to the Finance Committee that they and, recommend this. Okay. And I, yeah, I, I, well, I will be geographically indisposed, but someone should be there to make the case. Uh, or make you, mean the next, case. you mean next Tuesday? Uh, yeah, next, next Tuesday. I, I don't know if that means Jim should be there or uh, one of us should be there. I, I mean, if we're meeting at four, I can, I can have. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Sure. All right. Memorandum of agreement. Uh, select board and the Whitley Public Employee Committee pursuant to MGL Chapter 32B, Section 21 Yep. So if you'll recall, just a quick background on this. Are oh, okay. Are we, it's, we got like five minutes left, right? <laughs> so because the the, 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 the yeah, because the trust vote and plan changes, it requires each member town to go through the process laid out in 
um, MGL 32B, which requires the town to share 25% of the savings um, that the town um, would get from these plan changes. So we've gone through, I've had meetings with the what's called the IAC and the PEC, Insurance Advisory Committee and Public Employees Committee, which Waitley doesn't have either of those committees or not standing committees in the town. So what ends up happening is you meet with a representative from um, Union 38 and you meet with a representative from retirees. And how the process should work is that um, Mass Retired Employees um, Association, the way that the law is written is that they should be designated a representative, which according to uh, town council, they never do. So we um, we asked Bill Smith to be the retiree, represent, uh, retiree representative. Um, so we met, we've met one, two, we've met twice, once as the IAC, once as a PEC, and there's all these notifications that need to go back and forth. Um, so what it comes down to is, in order to finalize this process, um, the town needs to win, the select board needs to enter into this memorandum of agreement between the town of Waitley and the Waitley Public Employee Committee, which memorializes um, the, the sharing of the 25% savings. Really the only decision through, through all of this is the decision that the PEC has to make um, and you know, with the select board um, is how those, of how that 25% savings, which in this case is on page two, $4,431.42, how that's shared among the 32 subscribers to the town's health insurance plan. And it, it sort of seems like it's in proportion to what... Right. So the, the, the wish of the PEC was that it be, that it be um, distributed in proportion to the cost that one incurs based on the level of plan that they have. So this is how, uh, on page two, paragraph four, mitigation, each subscriber would be, and we decided on a, a lump sum, a, a single time payment in January of 2020 to these subscribers. So 6402 for any subscriber that has the employee only plan, 14912 for whoever has an employee plus one, 18381, uh, per subscriber for the family and um, for the for the PPO, the employee owned, would get seventy three dollars. And this is obviously an increased cost to the town. It what? It's an increased cost to the town. Yeah, there's no actual there's no actual savings. savings that we right, about there's just a, redu a, a, a lower yeah. reduction. Yeah. Or yeah. a lower increase. Excuse it, me. It's costs. Right. Costs that we don't incur. Right. Is is what yeah. the savings. Um, so that's it's another four thousand dollars. Know, four thousand here, four thousand there. Pretty soon. Talking about no money, pretty soon. So that's the that's what okay. was agreed upon by the the PEC. So if you're willing so to sign, to sign up, this. it will. And the PEC will meet tomorrow um, to sign that. And we need to provide notification to all the subscribers by May first for the. Uh, uh, for the applicable uh, regulations. I still don't know if all the, I still don't know if all the towns are gonna to get through it. Um, there was a lot of concerns last year that some towns could not get through the process and what would happen to them, but that's not necessarily our concern. We, unless we more or less got to this point last year as well, right? We, or maybe just shy of this point before they realized. We had the this. agreement that's pretty much the agreement from last year. We were waiting to sign it, and we decided, and we delayed signing it because the trust had called this last minute meeting and backed, backed away from the changes. It, it, obviously, if that, if that were to happen again, um, that agreement would be null and void because there would be no savings. That will hopefully end this process, and I hope that the tr trust will not entertain this anytime soon. My fear is that that we'll do this they every make, year for the next 10 that years. they make small changes each year and not understanding the administrative burden that it places on its member towns. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. So okay. thank you. 
So, uh, street acceptance plan dated March 26, 2019. Yep. Um, so this is the, so the board had voted its intent to lay out the street. At, I believe it was two meetings ago, which triggered a, a letter to the planning board. I have not find And the planning board um, sent a letter back to you The meeting packet saying that they yeah. recommend that the yeah. lay out the street and it's in the best interest of the town to do so. Um, so it's extending Poplar Hill Road about yeah. just over 300 feet from where it was previously discontinued to the, the parking lot for the, um, the environmental center there. And this will allow the, the, um, the town to maintain yeah. the street maintain the road and um, have a place that the town, in the town way where the trucks can, can turn around. So when, so when, will this, when will this affect chapter 90 for road mileage? Is it now or is it when everything is completed? Um, I believe it would be... When all work is completed? I believe it would be when um, when the town takes um, control property. I would think at the recording of the of the East Indies. That's what we could claim it as additional mileage. Would it be when the work is done or just before or somewhere during that process? Um, right now it's I mean right now it's right now it's 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 passable condition because yeah. we oh, okay. use it. So yeah. I would imagine I would feel comfortable reporting it as oh. you know, once we take control of the, of the right-of-way. Okay, so kind of related to that, has the increased mileage for Lime Plains Estates been submitted to the state? I don't know. I have that a question for Keith. So it's up to Keith to do that, to submit that mileage? For yeah, I don't have access to the, the you know? Chapter 9 reporting system. I kind of believe you would have done that. I, I feel like I that's that's the last town meeting. I know, but I'm just curious yeah, yeah, yeah. if it's done. I mean, I mean yeah. somebody say keep on top of it, make sure we get every okay. mileage we can. Right. I, I mean, I, I trust you. So do you, yeah. do you need yeah. us to move to um, accept or do we just sign? the Poplar Hill do we just sign something? Well, there's a sign the order of layout. Which says that you've deemed that common convenience and necessity require the layout as a public way, a portion of Poplar Hill Road. Hereby, and the order lays out a portion of Poplar Hill Road as a town way, as shown on the plan reference below. So, if you might, it wouldn't hurt to make a motion to okay. order the layout of Poplar Hill Road as shown in the. I move that we order the layout of Poplar Hill Road as laid out in the map we were given our, our materials, and uh, uh, recommended by the. the Planning board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. So this will go as an article on the top of the warrant. This requires um, an acceptance of, of the select board layout by the residents, and the article authorizes the um, the town to accept or otherwise take control of the uh, of the layout right. by easement or more control for us. The, Okay. All right, as we're signing this, uh, Regional Council of Governments, competitive field bids, et cetera, et cetera, Brian? Yep. So for COG, um, puts together regional field bid, and we typically will purchase gasoline through uh, these regional, through the regional field bid program. Um, so that's what it would require the signature of the board. Um, we'll check gasoline. Historically, we haven't done um, number two fuel oil or diesel because we've gotten an extremely good price from a local company um, who doesn't participate in the regional fuel bids. But um, have we gone out separately for gasoline then?
Right. Have we gone out separately asking bids for the gasoline then? Um, no, we since I've been here, we participated in the in the in the regional program, I believe, for gasoline. The the company that I'm speaking of doesn't doesn't deliver gasoline. No, I know, but but a company that does, or a company that just does gasoline. Why why are we looking to see if it's any cheaper than what Furcon is providing? Um, we could. Um, this is so. This is authorizing our our participation in the program. Um, I don't think it requires us to. There, there's there's a fee. There's a, a cost involved to participate. Have they always charged a fee, or is that a new fee? Um, I think they've always charged. Have they? Yeah. It's it's in there. Uh, I guess I think we should also solicit our own. But I think in the past, what's happened with gasoline is that. This is stretching my memory a little bit, but I think the first, maybe it was the first year I was here, because um, I, I think Marianne was still here. Um, the problem is, it's not, it's not a competitive. No, there's no competition. There's not a lot of competition. I think it's either um, Sandry or um, FL I want to say Burke. I, I think FL Roberts. Used to participate. Um, I have. Uh, but I have, guess prices change every year, so. The, the, the two companies that bid for gasoline bids through the FERCOG last year um, were Sandry Energy and Roberts Energy. Uh, I think when we went in the past, at least this one instance, when we went out on our own, we didn't get any bids. We did not. I don't think we got any bids back. For the gasoline. Well, that would have been what three years ago, you see. I think so. Because yeah. well, so we're not that big. We have. So we use them for three bids, or I guess my question is: Is this going to be 150 times what? For a product. It's I understand that. So how many products? Oh well. Just one. One. Yes. And it's just a one-time. Yes. A yeah. year. Okay. Okay. In the company for the for the for the diesel and number two fuel oil, it's been Kiaris who's yeah. who's responded. And just for comparison purposes, this year it was it was 17 cents above rack price, and the ones received by for a cargo of a rack price were around 35 cents for some of the towns. So it's, it's significantly better, 35, 39. <coughs> Okay, um, town administrator employment agreement. Uh, we're going to table that until the next meeting. We just received feedback from council at around five o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Probably later. So Probably that, later. Yeah. So, so and I need to review it and then and I need to go over with Brian. So. Okay. Was that something we'll do at the executive session? You think on Tuesday? Mm -hmm. or? I don't think and it has to go to executive session necessarily. We've already. Um, no, I was just thinking in terms of getting it in before the finance committee takes their vote on the budget, right? Because, or does oh, it not affect? I, I guess I was I was assuming the number doesn't get impacted. It's it's, it's language. language. Oh, it's, it's language. Oh, yeah, okay. it's legal Okay. So I think. So if the, the number is not going to be the number doesn't the change. Okay. Um, Council just had issue with a couple. I mean, yeah, it was. I, I, I read like two of the. Yeah. Maybe printed out. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So. Let's, 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 uh, unless you have a problem with that. No, so, so, and I, I thank Amy for this. I've obviously stayed clear to keep boundaries, appropriate boundaries. Um, is, I guess it's, it, maybe it's, it's a decision of the board, obviously, but for Jonathan and I to discuss, or for Jonathan to discuss what would be otherwise confidential correspondence between Town council and yourselves. Oh. Oh, so maybe you should be executive session on Tuesday. It's more for whether you, what you want me to see in our discussions. I, I'm not privy to advice of, of the board's council oh, on this matter, but obviously some of it we're going to talk about anyways. Right. Well, you are kind of privy to it because you've seen this. I have not seen it. Oh, you have oh. not seen this. Oh, okay. Right, but it, but it is an agreement that you're going to eventually have to see. Correct. Right so, 
Yeah, so I guess the question is, do you want to talk with us about it first, or do you want to be able to? Well, who signs the agreement? You signed the agreement. I signed it. I signed it. Why don't you? So, yeah. If, if, unless you guys are, are why don't you send yeah, I, I, Amy your thoughts on whether you're comfortable with me discussing this these comments with Brian, and then Amy can confer with me in terms of you guys are okay with it. I, I, they're not big deals to me. I, I looked at them. I have no problem telling Amy now. But go ahead. You can discuss them. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to take a little. I want to take a closer look, right. and I've had okay. time too. Okay. It's right. Like you say, legal ease and. There are a couple things where this isn't ordinary. I, yeah. I would leave this to John's discretion. Okay. Um, Let's. Uh, uh, okay. That. I, I guess I don't feel really strongly about it one way or the other. So I, I think. Let me digest it and then have a nice yeah. meeting. Only having a quick look, you're right. It is, yeah. it okay. is legally, it's things we've had yeah. in the contract yeah. all the time. There are a couple and, new and, things. There are and it looks like they're just bringing to our attention that you've had stuff in there that. There is some, there is some new stuff that we added. Right. So, yeah. So, and I, yeah, so that's. Is that okay with you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So, do you so want the number stays the same? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. 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 That's. So, is that something that. You and I will work out the language. Yes. And then. And then the, we'll present. If that's the case, and I don't, then I don't see the need for an executive okay. session unless. All right. And Amy, you'll keep an eye on these guys. Yeah. Okay. She hasn't. Been, I have not seen it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Skipping over a couple of things here. Yeah. There's. Yeah. We should. What do we skip over? A bunch of. There's a bunch of for a things. Oh, I thought that was all. I'm sorry, I didn't read it clearly enough. I thought that was all the same. I apologize. Go back to the So community, so this community compact, when we submitted the community compact, one of one of our small awards was to um, was for the state to give FERCOG money to hire Joe Markarian to provide um, these budget documents that. Um, I had attached an email. We had some issues printing them up. Um, and they presented those to the Finance Committee, and he also presented some policies um, to the Finance Committee. Um, so I think they've completed their work, uh -huh. but it just requires the select board. I don't know why it requires a select board sign up, but it does. Um, Phoebe Walker sent an email asking that the select board vote to um, accept the, the budget tool that they gave us. Do you think we should? I think we should. Okay. Uh, they fulfilled their obligations with the contract. I think some of the items are useful, and I've incorporated them into the budget documents. And then I think some are um, showing the same material in a different manner, which I don't think is necessarily helpful. Okay, he did help. But at least some portion of it is helpful. Uh, yeah. So one of the one of the one of the items is included in the budget projections for the finance committee, and he did provide the finance committee with budget policies, which wasn't part of the scope of the work. Um, okay. But that will be helpful okay. moving forward. So. Should uh, we make a motion then? Yeah. Um, I, I was confused by the wording. Notify us clearly that the town will not be voting to accept. But you want us to vote to accept their work as completed then? Yeah, that'll be. Okay. I uh, move that we vote to accept their work as completed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Done. Energy planning technical assistance. Here's an email from Melissa LaRose from FERCOG in your packet. FERCOG has the opportunity to apply for a state grant from DOER to assist your town with energy related planning and technical assistance over the next two years. FERCOG can provide the following services. Green community reporting. I don't feel that we need it. There's a huge need for that. Assist with procurement activities for approved grant funded projects. We don't have any, currently have any grant funded projects. Not um, non green community clean energy project management. That's not applicable because we're a green community. Four, clean energy planning. Is there anything we want to do um, or assistance that we might want from FERCOG for clean energy planning? Yes. EV yes. charging stations. <laughs> um, there's one thing that I've been made aware of. I was looking into it, like after we talked about solar, 
um, and, and uh, talk to people who come up with innovative ways to fund solar for nonprofits and, and municipalities. And what they need right now is they've not ever done it for a municipality. Um, they need help putting together uh, an RFP that municipalities can use to try to participate in this kind of a program. The, or a uh, program's not really the right word, uh, this kind of a, um, a funding mechanism. Um, I participated as a, a member in this kind of program for a nonprofit where um, I, I actually provided loan money. But what they do is the, the, the group pulls together um, investors who need tax breaks, basically, um, and they will buy the tax breaks that you get with solar that the municipality can't take advantage of. Um, and they use that money for the upfront costs. Now that normally won't cover all the upfront costs. So this same group has you know, members who are simply interested in funding green projects, like myself. Um, they uh, make up the difference with member loans so that the upfront cost of building a solar, let's say a solar field, um, is largely not needed from the town. The town, as a, as a nonprofit, wouldn't take in the tax advantages anyway. Um, what they uh, structured as a small LLC, and they worked out uh, a lot of it, um, the legalities of it, and it's been done for nonprofits. Um, there's some, um, basically at the beginning, you have to lay out what are the risks to the town and what are the risks that uh, any group who wants to respond to that RFP would be taking on. Uh, so the details of the RFP need to kind of get hammered out in a more um, uh, detailed legal way. Um, what they have done in the past with other nonprofits is the, the, the nonprofit basically has to promise to be a good partner. You know, um, typically, say for a municipality, what they have in mind is a municipality would identify locations within the town where we would find it acceptable to put solar here, 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 and here. And this is how many uh, kilowatts, megawatts we want for capacity. Um, and then they hire someone to, they put out the RFP and companies can bid on that. And there are companies who just specialize in this particular kind of, I can't remember the book was, but I want to call it the reverse tax flip funding model. <laughs> but they specialize in this kind of a project where they can uh, build the project, the first up to 10 years of the project, the municipality or nonprofit gets a discount on their, on their electricity, which comes from that solar field. Um, and you can actually specify that in the RFP. Um, you can say that we were offered um, 85 cents on the dollar at one point from uh, one of these places. We can specify that for the first 10 years. And at the end of the 10 years, you have the opportunity to buy the array at market value. Um, and it, uh, I can put the papers with me. But to, to really work it out and to really know the specifics, we need uh, a really good, specific, uh, legally binding kind of RFP that where someone considers all the various details. And you think this would do that? I think FERCOG or Pioneer Valley Planning Commission would be the kind of group that could hire the right person to do that. You know, you, uh, you need someone uh, who's going to have the knowledge of, you know, solar energy and how that works in Massachusetts, and uh, kind of the the knowledge to kind of really figure out what what are all the risks and how are those risks going to be divided between the participants. Um, there, the, I mean, the group that does this, um, or it, there is a small company that is, you know, one of the companies that does it. Um, Called, um, I'm blanking on their name right now. They're the ones who actually did the building with the, the nonprofits that I personally did invest in. Um, 
it it seems like it seems like if you're going to do solar on a municipal level, this is the way to go about it and get the biggest advantage for the least cost. Because your upfront costs are pretty minimal if this is workable. Um, they it, there are commercial companies that will do the same sort of thing, but at the end of the 10 years, either you don't get to buy it or you have to buy it for uh, a bigger percentage. You're paying a lot more at the end if you have the trouble buying it. So I, I've probably done a bad job because, you know, seeing this now I realize, oh, this is like maybe we could get them to do, uh, make sort of what I might call a generic RFP or an RFP that's particular to Waitley that other people could model RFPs on for municipal solar. So that seems to me when they say opportunities for solar PV on municipal property, that's something we need and we need to probably do it without having to furnish the upfront money for ourselves. Why didn't we or, or can we ask Nexam for reduced we, rate of buying electricity for them? I'm not saying we can't do that, but they are a company that's, their job is to make a profit. Right, but I mean, we've the, the, agreed for their facilities to be built in town. I, I guess I, I don't, I haven't seen anybody not, looking they, at that. They're not gonna sell us that to give it to us so we get free electricity for every year after the first 10 years. What happens, and then, and then it's on our dime to take it down after 30 years if, if that's the shelf life. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. For whatever that cost is. And we have to think about that. We have to right. Yeah, that. And, and that, so, I mean, that's the kind of, I think, the planning that would have to go into it. And it, it's it's more than, say, a, let's say, a town administrator could take on. It's probably more than a volunteer could take on. Um, it's, I feel very, you know, technical and legal assistance, it really fits into there. Um, it might be something bigger than they want to take on, but I think all the municipalities in Franklin County, or even beyond that, would benefit from somebody exploring that and seeing if we, if this model that is working for nonprofits can be made to work for municipalities too. Well, so that's so, the, it, and and it's, I think it fits the technical assistance. Okay, so but I don't think, and I think that's great. I don't think we have to be that descriptive here. We just have to say we're interested at this point, correct? Um, well, we so we would respond to Alyssa's email here um, because at some point it looks like they're going to send us a memorandum of that's understanding. Right, and, to, to, and then that's when we have to be specific. Um, because I also would like some guidance on it, and, and I apologize if I'm right. kicking a dead horse here, but. I, I really am concerned about the future of solar siting with the utility pole siting being a, a real challenge to people who, who, who want to preserve the, the rural right. landscape of the town. And I'm wondering if there's anything in here that could help us figure out how to put these wires on. I mean, that's, that, and that is clearly, in my opinion, clean energy planning because it's infrastructure around the energy plan. And I don't think that they're asking us to limit our, our, our work in the, memorandum, in the memorandum with just one thing, because I think we all agree that EV saying that char public charging stations is a good thing too, so yeah, we could list all three. I don't think it's limiting us. So I, I'm for I'm for what the resources are. I'm yeah. for um, Brian responding to the email saying thumbs up, and then they'll get us the MOU. Correct, Brian? Or well, the MOU that? is going to need to say the the list. The MOU will need to will need to spell out the services to be provided. Okay, so I think maximum that, budget. Do you need us then? And I think you could probably do the EV. I mean, I can write up my my interest. Joyce can probably write up a succinct. Uh, yeah, it might. Yeah, I might need a little. Uh, but they've got until May 10th. Right. Possible. So if if we each provided you those two, and you could take on EV charging, 
by May 10th. That could be. Well, they need to get yeah, us the MOU right, right. and get it to us to have right. it so, yeah, signed. So it's like, okay, whatever the timing is. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's so we meet the next couple weeks. It will be the second Tuesday. We meet the first. Well, that's the already signed by. So if we sign by that date, will that? We signed on the eighth. If should we sign on the eighth, right? Should be fine. Need to be expert. But, but they need time to draft the MOU and get it to us. <clears throat> so we need to express to them what we want to be included okay. in the MOU. So if we get that, I mean, if we get our language to you within a week, that gives you plenty of time. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll give her a heads up. Okay. And then traffic counts. Fred. <laughs> yes, this has been on my mind for, for a while, and I, I think we, we need to look at getting traffic counts on Christian Lane and State Road intersection. It's been quite a few years since anything's been done for traffic counts here, and I think this is a appropriate time since it's still number one on their eye accident intersection list for Franklin County. So, and I guess I would propose we we look at at least uh, well, they're looking at type of county ATR volume and class uh, for each of the, the four legs of the intersection and inter intersection turning movements, I guess I would say, and uh, if, it's, if it's possible. Uh, <coughs> the turning movements are gonna tell you where the trucks are coming from, because I think there's, there's an issue with trucks turning there, and it would be helpful to know whether the majority of them come from the south or from the north on, on State Road, uh, turning onto Christian Lane. It's not so much on the west side of Christian Lane that's a problem, but it's the other side. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would suggest that we submit this asking, at first, at least for the, the ATR ones, and if they're available for the, the intersection turning, which is probably gonna be a manual count. You need somebody physically there uh, to do that. For the ATR, I would I would suggest a seven day count. Seven day count and the intersection turning movement I guess could be less than that and even even uh, doesn't need to be 24 hour. It can be 10 hour, 12 hour, whatever during the daytime. I I, I think it's great. Whatever you wanna you wanna word that, Brian. Uh, what if? If that's the way we want to go, how about Fred and I? Yeah. Work yeah. Together to, yeah. Okay. He has a technical knowledge. Um, okay. And I think we should include Keith in the conversation probably as well. Right. That's okay. But that's what that's what we'll, that's what we'll spend for is the Christian Lane State Road intersection. Okay. Good. Annual town meeting. Let's go. All right. Well, let's do this through the warrant. Yeah. This is the draft warrant here. So we'll be, um, the board will sign this next Wednesday. That's our intent. Uh -huh. uh, at six o'clock, right? Yes. What? Yeah, they're all at six. Yeah, they're all at six, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Um, one, two, three, four are our, our basic four plate articles. Um, five is the spending limits for the revolving <coughs> funds. Those are the same as FY19 as listed currently. Article six is the salaries from last year with the COLA added. Page three is the enterprise funds, um, enterprise fund budget. I didn't mean page, well, it's on page three, but article seven is the Article eight is going to be the operating budget, which we have on a different sheet, which isn't exactly ready yet. Well, yeah. the finance committee hasn't approved it yet. Um, and Article nine is just a placeholder if there's going to be, if the finance committee is going to recommend any transfers to from free cash to stabilization or things like that. Yeah, there might be for the water, that, or is that going to be a separate? Um, that'll come a little bit later. Um, Article 10 has to do with um, 
putting free cash towards the tax levy, which the town has done, that the Finance Committee has voted to do in the past couple of years. Um, so Article, the next proposed capital project appropriations and authorizations. So Article 11, so these are the, these are the, the capital projects that have been voted on by the CIPC. The Finance Committee hasn't voted on these yet, but this is the ones that have been presented. Article 11, $7,500. Um, to replace the furnace in the highway garage. Article 12 is the 35,000 to pay for the design of the handicapped accessibility improvements at the library. Article 13 is $8,000 to pay for the uh, new tires for the front loader. Article 14 is $10,000, and stop me if there's any questions, I'll just keep going. Um, Article 14 is $10,000 from the vehicle stabilization account uh, to purchase a used pickup truck. Uh, by the highway department, the plan is that the highway department will purchase the water department truck, the water department um, truck. So are they paying them to ten thousand for the water department truck? Um, there's an exact amount. It's I don't know that it's exactly ten thousand, um, but it's an exact amount that's been agreed upon. I can get you that. How old is that truck? That amount. The water department one's only uh, um, three, four years old, maybe. Probably five. It's not that old. So why are they exactly doing this? Good. Um, because the highway department, or if, um, the green truck yeah. that the highway department has is 1992. So that needs to be replaced. So that needs to be replaced. Um, so, so the I water department is planning on purchasing a new vehicle, any, a new truck anyways. But why? Um, uh, because the water commissioners voted to do it. I don't know exactly the rationale. Uh, but it's, it's, what did you say, three or four years old? Well, one reason I, I think they, they want to, it's being used to plow snow on they want a, a lot of town properties. And they want, they think they need a bigger vehicle. Uh, more yeah. horsepower, more heavy duty rated vehicle. And one with the utility, I think they're going to put a utility yeah. body on the back, uh, yeah. utility bed on the back for tools and pipes. Okay. Um, Article 15, that's, um, this is Water Department Enterprise Fund retained earnings, $20,000, this needs to be appropriated um, to purchase a new pickup truck. They have, I think it's 20000 or 25000 already because they save up each year $5,000. Um, so they would need the additional 20000 and then that 10000 would come back in their, into their retained earnings. Article 16 is $13,750 to pay for the um, new five inch fire hose, um, and that's the cost to outfit one truck, I believe. Um, and I think Fred John was saying that that would be the idea is that that would be recurring so that all three trucks, right, right over three, three years, three years yeah, yeah. get the hose replaced. Um, Article 17. $20,000 to pay for the installation um, of new tile flooring in the area rugs at Dwayne Elementary School. That should complete um, the replacement of the existing carpets um, since they've been trying to do a couple classrooms each year. Um, the uh, city town will transfer the sum of $31,500 to pay for the installation of new siding and um, wanted to add some wiggle room here. New siding and other exterior repairs at the fire station. This is this is one that's sort of been debated by the finance committee um, and the and the CIPC in terms of what what the best avenue um, is to take to address um, the deterioration of the siding. And I'm sure it'll be a, a, a I know it'll be a topic of discussion at the finance committee on Tuesday. And so this could change. It, it could change. The finance committee asked John to go out and, and get quotes um, to just what it would take to, to repair the sheet metal or um, even to replace it because the plan that was presented to the CIPC was to, was to cover the building with vinyl siding and there were cons concerns people had about um, pushing, uh, pushing out the, the siding, how it would um, how it would mesh with the roof line, and um, if you're pushing it out three, you know, three half inches. Um, so he went out and got he. I got him in touch with a um, 
the nearest Butler building representative, and that person came out and had discussions with John about repairing it or replacing it, and they don't recommend, well, there's a practical problem of they don't make the sheet metal, they don't make the sheet metal how it's stamped. They don't make that anymore. So I think there's problems with, with how it would be replaced. Um, and they said they gave them a quote to do the entire building, which was around, um, which was around the same price. Mm. Um, and he said that was, he said that was a deal because they had the material in stock, apparently. Um, yeah, I've heard that before. So, yeah. Um, but it does seem better than signing on to the on time. I, I think there's a lot of concern about the durability of that approach, long-term durability of that approach. Fred, you, you've been involved yeah. in this. Yeah, yeah there, and, and, and really the need to replace all of it. I mean, there's parts of, that are rusted, but I mean, if you've got stuff Siding on your house, it's, it's rotting or, repla or needs replacement, you don't replace the whole house. Siding on the whole house. Or, or if it's wooden, you're not going to put vinyl on the whole house. And to me, that's a kind of scenario here. There's, there's the areas that need to be repaired. And not cover the whole building with a new siding. I mean, and the areas that need to be repaired are, I, I don't know, I'd say 10, 20% of all the siding at the most. So. And, and maybe the Brian, the wording should be rather than, than pay installation of new siding, should it be to repair or investigate repairing new siding and exterior repairs? I think this has to be for the installation of the solution, whatever the solution is. Okay, I don't think it can be for investigating okay. the solution. Well, or so, to be installation of new siding, well, well, I guess I'm not saying what kind or anything. But. Right. Yeah, I think it's just something that okay. will probably be discussed. Right. So that may be more at the fine space. That, that might be refined. Okay. Um, um, uh, 19 is the transfer. Uh, 50, that's $15,000. So um, well, that's new mini split units at the Whitley Elementary School for the office and the cafeteria um, to supplement the systems that are there. Um, so Article 20, and this language may change based on conversations with town council, but this is the vote to borrow up to $220,000 for the construction of a pumping station. Uh, that we had talked about, this is for the connection of the two water systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, that requires a two-thirds vote. And Article 21 is the, uh, the, tr the sum of $87,000 from available funds to pay for the costs associated with upgrading the pumping station to provide sufficient water volume and flow for the system to be used by the fire department for fire extinguishment purposes. Um, I think that accurately reflects what yeah. the joint meeting that we had. Um, Article 22, this is an annual request from the 250th committee to appropriate um, $20,000 from available funds to be, um, to be used for planning for the 250th anniversary celebration, which I think takes place in 2021. Um, Article 23, that's the sum, um, $4,800 to pay for the health insurance plan change reimbursements required by General Law Chapter 32B. Article 24, that's the sum of $5,000 to pay for the design and engineering of sidewalks along Chestnut Plain Road. We talked about this in terms of the qualified and yeah. not qualified engineer and and cost. And That's not paid for under the complete streets? No, complete no, streets doesn't they, pay for they design and construction. Doesn't. Okay. No. And if we were to use Chapter 90 money or, or state funds, it would require us to hire a mass DOT pre qualified engineer, okay. which means we're hiring one of these big yeah. firms that charges. Okay. Is, uh, okay. That's yeah. one. Blaisberg is having a problem right now with finding money for design. Yeah. Um, the quotes they've gotten from the larger engineers have been. Okay. Ten times, ten plus times more than what we've had. Um, part of 26 is the Community Preservation Act appropriations. This was voted on by the CPC. Frontier Resources. Skip it. Mean 25. Article 25. Please skip down. 
Article 25. Oh, that's one that has an explanation attached to it. Um, Article 25, Frontier um, District Capital Improvement. So there's been a lot of discussions in the past couple of days between the, the towns and areas. Yeah. And what, um, what Frontier is recommending, and, and I agree with it, and we'll obviously have town council look at it, but what needs to be approved or what Frontier is asking the town to do is to approve the debt authorization. Frontier, Frontier is not going to um, borrow in fiscal year 19. Um, so any borrowing that's going to take place, the debt service will be due in 2021 at the earliest. So we don't have we don't have to um, we don't have to appropriate any money. At this uh, end of the time, for twenty, for twenty, right? Um, and he, he was even skeptical about whether there would be money due in 20, um, 2022, whatever it is, um, with the with the. Uh, but can I but yet or no? Sure. We had decided that, and maybe it's later on, that our portion of the track. Yep. was going to be not part of the debt service, but we were going to do that through CPC, CPA money. Um, what CPC had voted was to pay a proportion of the debt service that's um, assessed to the town. Right, but that's nine, $9,000 a, a year, I believe, over, I don't remember how many years. It was a little bit less right. Than so, yeah. but, but why isn't that? Oh, so that nine thousand dollars doesn't come due to fiscal twenty one. Yeah, we originally had an article in here, um, which was the CPA, and I, I, I emailed um, several of the CPC members, and they said that we should probably take out and recommend that that article okay. not go forward. Okay, this that's year. fine. I understand that. So this is really only an authorization of debt without um, without appropriation of funds because. We don't know exactly what those amounts are going to be until they borrow and the interest rate they get and what they end up borrowing for is really unknown but we are authorizing the debt and in so authorizing you know that we will pay that the we debt will pay our portion of that. that we will pay our portion of it mm -hmm. um, so we will we will pay our portion of the 1.8 million dollars in debt and this will have some other supplementary table or something that is kind of forecasting what those payments might be for Whaley. Yeah. Some, some range. Yeah, I'll, I usually like to put together a town meeting book with that. We'll have, we'll have that, that spreadsheet that they show. Yeah, the, that's what I was know. thinking before. Understanding right. that that's an estimate. Right. Um, but they can't, ex obviously they can't exceed the one point. One point. Okay. Um, this requires the unanimous vote of all four towns. So, right. um, we'll see what happens. We'll see. So, 26. Article 26, this is the CPA. These are the 26, 27, 28 are the CPA um, Act Appropriations. Um, so, it's typically what, we see, typically what we've seen in the past. The one addition is the debt service from FY20 estimated revenue. That's for the Cal Hall loan debt service of, excuse me, $43,000. Um, Article 27, the CPC approved a request um, of, of $4,400 for the restoration of the circa 1938 advertising backdrop curtain um, owned by the Whitley Historical Society. It's mounting on the town hall stage. Um, Article 28 is to transfer the sum of $10,300 from the Arizona Fund Balance for the restoration of the circa 1891 historic town safe now located in the west entrance of the town hall. I, I asked uh, Judy the other night for an explanation of the $10,000 they plan on spending. You look on the CPC site, it gives you a, a very generic description of what they're doing with a reference to an attached Scope of work by uh, by consultant. I guess I like to see what we're going to get for ten thousand dollars on that safe. That was at one point going to be uh, recycled. So 
before we started the project. So, so you're saying that you don't want to recommend it? Not right now. I, I guess I, I would like to see what we're what they're doing for the ten thousand dollars, Jonathan. <laughs> I can. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the email to see if. Yeah, maybe, maybe like I said, I asked Judy to, to put it on the website because it's on the CPC folder or page on the website. Yeah. Describing it, but, but not the attachment. Okay. So, we'll see if we okay. can All right. Well, I'm Article 29. That's um, the layout of Popcorn Hill Road mm -hmm. and authorizing the select board to acquire by purchase gift, eminent domain, or otherwise, the fee to and or easements and set Popcorn Hill Road. Both the landowners, uh, Peter Creasy and Smith College, plan to donate easements um, for that, um, for the street there. So, okay. um, so I had a request, and Fred, this is something you'll talk about on Tuesday, I guess, at the Board of Assessors meeting, mm -hmm. um, that the town consider accepting General Law 50, uh, chapter. 59 section 5 is 54 which would exempt personal property which would exempt from taxation per, per, personal property accounts with an assessed value of less than five thousand dollars i put this in as a placeholder that this the board of assessors will talk about it at the meeting at what, what's an example of that um like a really old car that's only assessed for $2, so $2, so it's in most cases it impacts very small dbas new business as businesses um, who are not incorporated, but they're they're charged a, a, a personal property tax. So some of the ones that Cynthia was talking about, um, some of the some of the auto body shops in town. Um, um, she mentioned a bunch of other small things. Like apparently, if Coca Cola has a vending machine, then it's then it has personal property within the town, so it gets charged. Uh, so apparently there's there's 16 accounts would qualify. Um, and altogether those 16 accounts generate $498 in tax revenue. Okay. Um, and, then how the much, and, say, and then how much administrative cost to collect the That's $500? Right. right. My only thought is, yeah. At the present 16, count of 16, I get it. But what happens if that number goes to 48, a multiple of, of four, okay. or whatever the math is? Then you're, I, I, just, I just think about the precedent that we're setting. So I'm, I'm wondering if they could create a list of what those 16 are so we know what the multiplier could be down the road. Yeah. I don't know. And, and, I, and I guess I'd like to hear the assessors think after their meeting too, right? Yeah. Because I mean they're so much closer to this, and yeah. I would value their take yeah. on it. Yeah, there's if there's only 16, there's there's probably another 70 or 80 that pay higher that are assessed higher than about five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah, so. which makes sense. Yeah. I mean the 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 old taxation around Bear <laughs> when they did their I mean that was. Pretty good through the town for a while, so I wouldn't want to. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's obviously more than five thousand dollars, but okay. So, so we'll be looking for a recommendation um, from the board of assessors on that. Okay. Um, this was a request by. Uh, it was by by Fran Fortino, and, and it was by the through the Franklin County Solid Waste District. Yeah. Um, that the town, they're asking for all the member towns of the. Franklin County Solid Waste District to authorize the select board to enter into a 10-year con 10-year recycling contract. Well, 10-year uh, contract with the option for a five-year extension. Okay. Because all of these, whatever the current contract is with it's the uh, about to expire. and Mur Murph and whatever, yeah, the, uh, whatever that right, stands for, Murph. Um, it's going to expire. Um, yeah. So this would allow the, the select board the opportunity to participate in that process. Which reminds me that we really need to have a conversation about what is recyclable and what is not at the transfer station at some point because there's a whole laundry list of things that they will not accept for recycling that DEP indicates there's no reason why we should not be accepting it. Uh, so 
I don't know. I, I want to okay. revisit that, but it just it was a meta job. Okay. Article 32 is a proposed zoning amendment. Um, that's what we, so 32 and 33 really go together. That's the yeah. adaptive yeah. use of historical municipal religious commercial buildings. Um, 34, that gets into the, the short term rentals. Mm -hmm. Short term rentals. Uh, and article, uh, so Article 35 is just a housekeeping item at the point of what it voted on. Um, it yeah. just moves yeah. lodging houses from being listed as a residential use to commercial use. And then, so we have a, so the last article here is a voter submitted petition. Um, so, Lynn had forwarded this petition um, that's listed in the warrant. Mm -hmm. If you look, um, I've heard about this. I heard about like, someone from Sunderland right. telling me about it. Maybe Sunderland got a similar petition. Yeah, but I think, yeah, that's typically what happens. So there are some issues with the, um, there are some issues with the, with the petition with the petition, not the petition. Um, and in talking with Lynn, she thinks that it would be okay um, if the board was to accept this and um, find that the errors in the petition were essentially harmless and could move it forward. Um, so a couple of the things that are wrong with it, on the front page it talks about under the instruction to signers, it says you must be a registered voter in the town of Montague. Mm -hmm. Your signature should be written substantially as registered. Um, signer statement with the underside are qualified voters of the town of Montague. So we all know what's happening here is this has been right. circulated and not changed. Yeah, and it's in the small print, it's not in the big right. number it's, at the top. It's here. Right. Um, yeah. It's here. Um, so Lynn did certify these, you know, these as. Um, Montague's voters. Montague voters um, to go out of work. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's up to the board. It's really the board's discretion as to whether it wants to move this petition okay. forward or not. I have a problem moving the petition forward. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it. I mean, I'm not saying you should. That I'm voting for it in oh, town meeting. Okay. I'm saying right. that well, we shouldn't let the typos. Be the reason it's not in our time. Right. Typically, in this we case, move it it, typically it shows up as the warrant. If the select board wants to move it forward onto the warrant, it typically just says at the end by petition. Um, right. Unless the boards want to, any board wants to take yeah. a position on it, yes or no. Sounds like maybe the board won't, but. Um, <laughs> that might be. The question, the question for. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think that, I mean, there's, yeah, there, I mean, there would be good reasons to reject petitions. That's not a good reason to reject a petition. Yeah. You know, to make them go out and just get a different piece of paper and get the other tents. And it just seems like that's, that's ridiculous. I have no idea if it'll pass a town meeting or not, but I think, you know, it's just a democracy. That's, let it go to and town meeting. Let it go to town meeting, and right. it'll. And we're, we're more sound. Then we're yeah, we're not. Um, yeah, we. I, I don't think we should hold it back because of that. No, they should have done their homework. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, will it be cleaned up for town meeting? Because that I have a problem. With. What's that? The petition. So all you'll see is the language that's in here. It's in the yeah. Center. Yeah. The article, like the last two pages of that. Uh, uh, File that I'm looking at the file, but it's in the printed version here. I think probably towards the end of sort of two pages of text. So it's there. Yeah. That's all they're going to see there. I'm going to see the ten Waitley voters who right. signed it. They're only going to see the resolution is a report changing the state flag at Salem, Massachusetts. The article was written. Yeah. And, and we are supposed to print it exactly how it was submitted. Um, if there's oh, errors right. within the text of the errors and all, it, we need to put it on the warrant if we just put it on the warrant. Then, then I think that we should make a notice that we are aware of the errors and they're not our doing. Well, they, well, won't, they, they won't see the, the, the things you talk. 
If there are errors in this text, we have to put their errors in. But if there was an error in the, the paperwork form. that you yeah. filed, oh, 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 the signatures, yeah, yeah, then, we don't right. have to put that out. Right, but you get my point. I mean, we don't want people saying, right, what is this, like, we're sloppy. What's what right. Who submitted the warrant article? Who, who wrote the warrant article? Did that come from them, the petitioner, or that come from, from the petitioner? Everything comes from the petitioner. All right. So, um, yeah. is there issues with the warrant article itself, the way it's written? Because that's all the lawyers are going to see. That's the politics. So, then there's, there's mm -hmm. right. no issue then. So, we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Right. Yeah. So, we'll just be let it go, but we'll, we'll yeah. be quiet I, on it. I yeah. think we can. And then we can each individually go out how we choose. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. That's the last article. Amen. So, what does it look like? It's going to be too bad to tell me. Okay. The draft is only 16 pages long. And the budget will. The budget will help though. Add a couple pages. But. Okay. Okay. Are we done, Brian? Everybody's favorite topic, Town Administrator Updates. Uh, of mm -hmm. course. There's a letter in here from the Whitley Historical Society officially donating the remainder of the audiovisual equipment that was installed in the in the auditorium to the tune of just over fifteen thousand dollars. And should we send them a thank you? We could send them a second thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, got that, Amy? Okay. Are you excited? Greenfield Savings Bank wants to plant a tree in our town. We just got to tell them where to put it. <laughs> I think Keith can tell them where to And it would be the kind of elm tree that is not susceptible to Dutch elm, I would hope. Well, well let's hope so. Yes. Oh, these, these American elms that are resistant to diseases in insects. Oh, good. That sounds like genetic engineering to me. Uh, don't, yeah, sometimes don't. that's okay. Uh, yeah, I think it, it, that would basically get put in Keith's Lab, so it's just all right. Ready. That's wonderful. We should send a thank you note to them, too. Yeah, all right. So tell Keith to tell Greenfields. <laughs> Never mind, it's getting away. I should, should stop talking. Um, there's uh, the report from the regional housing authority about the town's um, housing rehabilitation revolving loan fund. Um, that's the balance in it. I'm not even changed. sure that I knew that that fund existed, but we're all the wise ones. Manganese filtration project started last week. Mm -hmm. uh, the filters are in the building. I've seen pictures of them, um, so they'll still need to um, still need to start the addition on the building to make room for everything. But um, and that's. Like a, that's a month or two project. Like, well, probably actual work. I think they're trying. Well, like any business, we're trying to fit it in between several different projects. So I, I would imagine it's going to take probably two or three months. Okay. Uh, if I had to guess. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Um. Brian, right. keep in mind that we're talking about your contract. There might be more. <laughs> there might be more. Um, so we'll go with that for now. All right. Okay. Well, you need to give you need to save something for good fodder for the next meeting. Now, next Wednesday, we are just signing. We are not deliberating on anything, correct? Um, unless something comes unless up. Unless something comes up. <laughs> That's urgent. But I, I believe the intent is the only topic for that meeting will be um, the ain't gonna tell me the one article unless you tell me different. No. That's the uh, 24th meeting? No. 17th. 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 Well, the 17th, and then we're meeting again on the yeah, okay. 24th, or regular meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one, I, yeah, I've got to be back home for 7 o'clock. So on the 17th. On the 17th, yeah. We'll make it quick then. We will make it definitely quick, just for Joyce. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. Good night and good luck. <laughs> <laughs>